found to watch Spicer TV's full match DVD coverage in association with Wolfie's Restaurant. I mean, at the base show green on Friday, the 5th of March. Cannot wait for that one to open. It's been a, a long time in coming, it could be said. We're here for tonight's game between the Bay State Bison and the Bracknell Bees, where it's back for Battle Night. And the Bison, as you can see, well, if you can, I'm not quite sure, really. They're dressed up in the camouflage jersey, so enjoy trying to pick them out at home from the eyes. It's good camouflage, anyway. Danny Murphy's joining me in the commentary box tonight. And, Dan, this is the game we both most look forward to in the season, really. Partly, there are reasons, if you bought this week's programme, you'll certainly find out my reasons, but... There's something special about local rival matches. Exactly, and the, uh, the meetings here we've had this season, the atmosphere's been fantastic, and the, it's obviously the local derby, so the fans get behind the boys, and there's a massive rivalry between the two clubs. And especially on something like tonight, where there is such a bumper crowd, and we've got lots of people hanging around the arena, around us, just trying to wait for this game. Anyway, the Bees at the moment, saw, since we last saw them here in December, they've sort of changed it up a little bit. They seem to be conceding less goals, and they still have that powerful bunch of Seski and Pinch up top. Yeah, exactly. We saw this first half of the season, they were just leaping goals, they were an example of the two meetings early in the season with these two teams, there was a 12 goals in one, eight in the other, but yeah, the last couple of weeks, as you say, they've conceded only five or four goals and the game's been tight, but they're going to be in for a bit of a struggle tonight because Kaminskis isn't there. Well, exactly, Kaminskis picked up a match ban in the game on Thursday night that took place at the Hive, where the Bees pushed the Guildford Flames all the way to the two overtime, where they unfortunately went down to a 4-3 defeat, but I'm expecting this Bison team to continue this incredible home-winning streak it's the best since the, uh, the league winning season back in the Heineken League days, I believe. Really going back in time now. Nine games unbeaten at home, and uh, I'm expecting them to win tonight. But if the Bees are to pick up the victory, once again, it's that favourite question we all ask who's going to be their key man? And really, there is only one man. Yeah, there's only one man you can pick, really. <laughs> I can't do with this Bracknell Bees team. What's his name again? Oh, no, yeah, 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 it's yeah, the yeah, yeah. yeah. top leading point scorer in the league. He's just been absolutely probably the best import in the league this season and the best player in the league, which is best say this season. Well, certainly in the My EPL Man of Ice Award, I found it very difficult not to put him down for import of the year, forward of the year, player of the year, even hard as ice. Oh, no, I mean, he's been such a great player for this Bracknell team. But we've got to look elsewhere. You're going with the obvious choose. Yeah. Boo you, don't choose <laughs> obvious. Go somewhere else on this team. I'm going for the netminders. Yeah, I know, it's the obvious other one, but I really do like Adam Marashi as a netminder, OK? Marashi certainly, earlier in the season, Amla got pulled from the first game. Marashi started the second. I thought was having a great game, but got pulled by the team once again. And I hope Marashi gets a chance tonight to show what he can do for this battle yeah, exactly. lineup. As you, as you say there, and that's it's 12 0 game, wasn't it? And Amla was having a bit of a struggle again. They pulled him out. And Marashi came in, faced tons and tons of shots, but he, to be fair, he had a great performance. He kept most of them out. and. Uh, it was, it was quite a surprise when he didn't get the start next game. Well, he didn't get the start. Oh, yeah, sorry, I, he I mean, got the start here next game, but he got pulled, and I thought yeah, he was having sorry. a good game. Did, wait, did you watch the DVDs at all? I mean, come on, it's a bit like We've got to talk about something else very quickly. We've got to plug our new sponsors for a little bit of time here. So, Wolfie's Restaurant up top there. It's been a long time in coming. You've looked at the menu tonight. It, it looks absolutely mouth-watering, doesn't it? Well, I'm, gonna, I'm glad. I'm, it's unfortunate I have to stand next to you in this commentary today, because you'll be drawing all over the place. I've got my feet wet before the end of tonight. Hey, can you enough, blame me? Look sweating. at that menu. Look at that menu. Yeah. I'm not worried about the food. Three pounds champagne on a Saturday night. I'll be, in a, I'll be here in a shot. Anyway, let's go to the game, shall we? Joining me in the commentary box is no Daniel Murphy. <laughs>
Well, the hockey fans welcome to the Basic Stoke Arena. It's value for Valor Knight as the Basic Stoke Bison take on the Bracknell Bees in what should be a really enthralling encounter as the M3 Derby makes its return to the Basic Stoke Arena. Joining me in the commentary box this evening is Daniel Murphy. Dan, we're pretty much not too sure where this one's going to go. Oh, wait, that's the line. We're expecting the Bison to win. It's just a case of how, by, by how many. Exactly. We've been having this conversation on the journey up there. We could... It was a question of how many goals the Bison can score. I think in, you, go, you can't rule out the Bracknell Bees getting a couple, obviously, with their forward line. It's just too dangerous. But without Kaminskis, uh, they gave they given up goals and the corresponding fixtures. I'm going to go for about 8-3 would be my prediction. I hate you so much because that's the top score. I told you on the way here that I said I was going to go for today. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, Bison just packed the punch all over the ice at the moment. The Bees, as you say, without Kaminskis, without certain other players, could find themselves in a lot of trouble. And the other guy I think more importantly missing for the Bees at times is Bicknell. He's one of the best penalty killers in this league. Uh, so I have to agree with you. I'm actually going to go higher, 9 3. Having heard Bicknell's out, having heard Kaminskis is out, I'm going higher. I can honestly believe that. We've got Sarah Manuel Puck drop tonight. It's Bryce, as you can see, are out there in the camouflage this evening. And look fantastic, especially Sammy Sajak. Uh, one of the best shirts I think in the league this season for the name on the back alone. Second time this season, ceremonial face off has happened between Terry Miles and Nicky Chin, and that's twice now Nicky Chin has also won the face off. So. Uh, we, we go on a bit about the importance of face offs in these games. <laughs> Bison have already won one. Well, Rene Ross is uh, once again the referee to see. We had a great game last week, and it's not very often I turn around and. Uh, Completely praised referee, certainly Rene Ross. It's square very nice. We both found out it was Rene and George. Both expected the hands to be in a wet in the air a lot. It wasn't, it was fantastic, as we said. Down to that headphones tonight. I've gone to the uh, double headphones setup, and it's uh, working a bit of a treat for me this evening. Can you hear me? Because I can hear you. Absolutely loud and clear, so it's uh, perfectly good for me up here. Anyway, Nicky Hook will go in the face off circle against Steve Moria. And the Bees win the first face-off. Is that all they're going to win tonight as they dump the puck in for that top line of Pinch and Sesky to chase? So it's gung-ho hockey at the moment. Both teams with their top line as Pinch tries to work it across. He finds Sesky at the back door. Nicky Watt makes his way to the net. Sesky plays around trying to find Watt, but instead he finds Pinch in behind the net, where he's put into the boards by the Bison. I do warn you, I'm not going to be able to spot the numbers that well tonight because the camouflage is hiding them very nicely. This could be quite interesting. The Bison just able to sneak out the zone. Lalco goes on the chase, but the Bees are able to regroup quickly and come back in. The Seski tries to work around, but in the end, he has to go back to Greg Randall. Nice little pass off finds Nicky Watt. Might find Seski up the far side of it. That's very neatly broken up on the D there by Andre Lalco on the back check. Bees still have it in behind the net, though, with Seski trying to work it around. Expect all the play to come through him tonight. Seski back out to the point. Greg Randall tries to shot and fans it, tries to find it back inside. Pinch gets a shot off far post. And that's very well held up there by Kiras on uh, Pin and Seski there, because the goal was just begging for it. Yeah, it's a good it bounce off the boards there, and Kiras with a great play to hold off Seski. Lauko coming forth, though. Lauko shoots and scores! One shot, one goal for the Bison! And who else do you want putting it in the back of the net? But Andre Lauko, great defensive work at the other end, give them credit. But the transition through the neutral zone, and with just over one minute and five seconds gone in the game, already fans. The Bison are up by one, thanks to Andre Nalco. And we saw the both the ugly side of two sides of Bratnell there, their forward line, their top line there, really pressuring the Bison it's defense there. But to a one bounce, great play, as you say, from Kiras. Uh, straight out a couple of seconds later, Lauko's there, rips through the defense, and let's have a great wrist shot. Uh, with a blink of an eye, it's 1 0. Well, that will do very nicely for the Bison. I mean, I have to say, the earlier you score against the Bees, the better, because, I mean, that threat they've got is very good indeed. We know it was Lauko with the goal, so the Bison now going to take out for a revenue. He finds a quick pass into Thompson. Thompson tries to take it forward. He finds Terry Miles for a check, and Rene Ross is going to call a penalty against the Brackle Bees here. It's going to be two minutes for hooking, so that's another thing you don't want this early in the game is to have a Bees player going into the box. I mean, you've just conceded your first goal, and now it's a penalty call. And even worse than that for the Bees, it's Carl Graham going in, who, dare I say, is about their only D-man left out there now. Greg Randall's a good D-man, but, I mean, you take out from instance, there's going to be a lot of pressure on Greg Randall this evening, and, uh, well, that's not where you want him in the penalty box. Exactly, and we, we mentioned in the pre-match how they, without committing they're going to struggle defensively, as you say, with another key man off. This, this could be important for Bayesians, though, because they could start running away with this game pretty early on. Bison already winning it, rotating it around, back door, trying to find Tom Long, just doesn't find Bees able to 
to sneak that one out of the zone. Look for Kyrus and Redmond on the point. The uh, top line taking a big change. He goes out to Mori, and Moria trying to work it, gets it back from Lauko. Mori has now got it far side. It's back rotation. Here goes Lauko. Lauko out to Kyrus on the point. Kyrus works it back across to Lauko. He's holding their line so far. Lauko takes it and gets shot off finds Moria. Moria plays it back into Lauko in front. Moria's in there trying to dig it around. And the Bees are just able to scramble that one away. And Claude Dumas is going to try and take this one forward. Good play here by Dumas. Giving credit. Let's off a backhander that Annette's is uh, able to cover up easily. And Tom Long will collect this one. One minute and 18 left. High pressure on the play there by Seskin. It's going to result in a turnover. But the Bison able to just get it back. So Seskin pinch out on the penalty kill here. Expect the Bison to go long and try and put the passes in. One minute, five now to go on the penalty. That's a great pass that finds Moria up the far side. Moria works it around, trying to find Tom Long. Lauko's at the back door, wanting it. Lauko gets it in behind the net instead. Put heavily into the board there by Shane Moore. But Lauko's still able to rotate it around. But maybe the Bees are going to flick this one out the zone, which they do. And Kyrus is going to have to regroup in his own defensive zone with 45 seconds to go as the Bison will take a chance to put out their second penalty. Power play line. Here goes Kyrus, plays out the far side. Just skates off the end of Hemming's stick. The Hemming still collects. He's got Chin round the far side, who he uses. Chin will look for Reynolds on the point. He tries to, but it's broken up neatly by Seski. But Chin still got it, gets it back to Reynolds. 27 seconds, back to the far side. Kyrus with the slap shot. Good save by Marashi. Comes back around, and the B's going to be able to take this one forward now. Seski's got it. This is where he's dangerous. Works it very nicely off the pitch. Pitch with the shot, broken up off the stick. And Seski's gone down very hard on the ice there. Uh, he's gone down straight away, grimacing and holding the knee. Uh, he doesn't look in too happy with that. Looked like a pretty innocuous check there, though. Uh, silence to centre around the arena. Seski's now back up to his feet. This is the last in the Bratton we want. Oh, sorry, Seski's actually still down. It's another man. This is a worrying time here for the Bees. I mean, Seski missed the first game of the season here because he picked up a five-plus game for a high-sticking call against Joseph Sorrello, who's also out for the Bison tonight. But uh, the last thing you want in any of these games is your big impact player taken away out your side, especially in a team that is missing Kaminskis and is also missing Well, Kim Seski's back up to his feet. I think he's going to be able to stay on. Uh, that may have just lifted the uh, tempo of the Bees a little bit out there now. Yeah, uh, she certainly fire them up, mate. So them starting to potentially retaliate against them. This is a this B team also takes a lot of penalties, so maybe it's got to be key that they don't lose their heads there because to stand up for their teammate. Well, the penalty minutes you talk about that B's 838, man, that 840 now. Bison 463. I think that's where the difference is. Okay, a lot of their penalties do come from major things. Certainly, Pitch has had a few run-ins with Topman this year, and various other players like that. But you can't be taking that many penalties against top teams. It's even really more astonishing if you look at Seski. I mean, he's taking 83 bit penalty minutes. That's more than any Bison player. Yeah, he's leading the league in score. It's incredible. Well, Bison managed to work it in the zone as the penalty came to a close. Chin and Bronyman doing the hard work, and Chin's going to try and fight his way around the back of the net. Does eventually win it off his man, but instead Nicky Watts able to get on the puck. He tries to go across ice, and Nicky Watts finished very nicely into the board there by Tom. Sean Thompson as the Bees go down the ice. No icing on the play, so the Bison have to regroup within their own zone. It's going to be one of those nights for me. Too many Bees out on the ice again. You've got the Bracknell Bees and the Basingstoke Bison and Ollie Bronneman as well, so that could make it more challenging. Here you go, the Bison flying up though. Works across to Bronneman, finds Chin. Chin's working it round, finds Bronneman. Bronneman backhand shot in front. And Marashi makes a very smart save there in front. It was pretty much point black there, but still Marashi got down on it with uh, 15 and 54 to go in the first. And a moment of, it looked like a moment of good fortune there for the Bees though, because uh, Rene Ross blew the whistle, but it didn't actually look like Marashi had the puck, because that's the whistle blew. The puck just seemed to squirm out of a defenseman's skate or something. I think that's what Yaroslav Seski is going over, having a word about. Talk about Adam Marashi quickly. He impressed us both games this season. We've seen him when he came on to replace Amlo, who was having, dare I say, a shocker. And then in the next game, he's having a very good game, yet for some reason it's full. Yeah, exactly. It's a, the impress, it certainly is impressive. It's got to be hard for a goaltender of these, both of the, uh, sorry, both of these, for the uh, Bracknell Bees, because the defence doesn't half hang them out to dry time and time again. I mean, the 12-0 uh, the game, I think uh, basically has something like 60 shots or something. Bees win the draw and it comes out to Oakwood. Oakwood's going to get a shot off and Rashi makes the save. Two Bison men in front, but it doesn't fall to anything. Tom Long finishes his check in there on Nicky Watt. Pretty much two-line hockey so far from the uh, Bees. Don't expect too much different. Greg Martin getting a shift. Funny enough, he's iced five games this year for the Bees. Or, well, he's played it. He's turned up every game, but he's not played that much. And he's scored quite a few goals for the side. But Jamie Lyons now going to gut it forward instead. Lyon tries to work it in and find Wiggins at the net. And he does, and oh, Wigwam Bam nearly finished that one off. Instead, Jamie Lyon having to do the work in behind. 
be, he's going to get a chance to break, but Wiggins puts the pressure on Danny House. And Wiggins very neatly skates round Danny House. Instead, the boys are going to be able to collect it, try to find Jamie Lyon for the tip in front of the car. It's going to be another penalty against the Bracknell Bees, and it will probably be for uh, interference on the play there. Jamie Lyon was nearly shoved out in front of the net there. So 15.07 to go in the first five minutes gone. Bees are down by one, and they've had two penalties on the box. Yeah, exactly. Really sloppy play from the Bracknell Bees and this is shows you what the goal has done to them because they came out all fine. That top line was working superbly. Well, the Bison were the ones under pressure for that first minute. But suddenly, Lauka goes, uh, goes up the other end of the ice, gets that goal, and it's now a completely different game. Well, it is indeed. It's just ridiculous, this is. I mean, I turned around in my programme that's tonight. I said, but these fans will be happy with the effort and commitment their side have put in this season. Results haven't all gone their way, but they'll be happy with the commitment. So far tonight, I don't think it'd be best pleased. Anyway, the Bison are going to try and regroup here as the Bees manage to win the face-off and take it out of the zone. So Lauko's going to work it up through the centre ice here. You don't want to leave him with too much space. Pinch and Seski out on the penalty kill, but Lauko's still got it in there. Lauko will try and work it around back out to Reynolds. Man free at the net for the Bison if they can find him. Lauko works it in very neatly. Works back out to Reynolds on the point. Puts it across Kyrus' slap shot. Beaten away, but Kyrus will be able to get the reclaim on the puck as he's put under pressure. Bison got it in behind and they just rotate it easily around the boards. Lauko back out to Kyrus. They really are beautiful to hold at the moment, the Bison on the power play. Lauko rotation. Trying to find Moria. Lauko in there. Trying to bury it and the Bees just managed to escape that one out with 1 minute and 15 to go on their penalty kill. So the Bison regroup within their own defence zone. Kyrus goes to the big pass. Finds Moria who puts it back out to Lauko. Lauko going to take it into there. Lauko rotates it to Reynolds, who gets a shot of two men on the tip in front, maybe a finish, not a chance. Comes back out and just escape the zone, so a minute to go now on the Bison power play, looking good so far. Exactly, the Bison just controlling the play so far, the Bracknell Bees just trying to try to keep to a box formation it looks like, but they just, the Bison's passing so quick they're just getting sucked around. Redmond on the point, let's go over shot, and Marash is able to tip that one over and wide. You've missed the last two weeks on this power play, the Bison. I mean, they went up to Peaceborough and they were northern five last week here against the Scimitars. I think they were two and three, but every power play, they look dangerous. I mean, it's quite funny tonight. They haven't maybe won the draws on the face off that they should do. Bison going to get a chance on the turnover, but it's just flipped up and over there with 27 seconds left on the penalty kill. Yeah, it really is a. At the moment, this power play at the moment, they're rotation around the zone at the moment. They seem to be playing very quick triangles along the board. And Steve even said last week, the systems that we're now playing are, are just amazing. It's better than some of the slow teams he had, where just in terms of how the system is working and how the players have bought into it. Yeah, I was just watching this, they're just finding it so easy to find spaces, and the passing is right on the money as well. Well, there it is again, as Bronyman's now got it. It goes back out to Redmond on the point. Redmond works around, finds Nicky Chin, who's shot, and scores! Lovely bit of work there! And we were just talking about the effect effectiveness of the Bison power play there. Once again, great pass, it was in all the players in control. And then Chin, that's a brilliant shot. Marashi looks screen because he. You can see the puck was getting to him, he only saw it late and couldn't get the glove up in time to make the save, but once again, another well-worked goal from the Bison. I'll tell you what, don't blame Adam Marashi for that at all, because Marashi was completely screened. That's just what Nicky Chin does best, he gets to the places, puts the shot in, brings the team in in front of the net, and that does the job. Here goes Greg Martin up the far side, though, he's taken into the uh, GB Faceplant Champion-sponsored uh, Sammy Sajak. And now the Bison are going to be able to play it out through Zajac. This is the perfect chance for him to really impress tonight. Here goes Redman, who plays it in deep, but it's broken up by the Bison and the Bees. But the pass just doesn't find his man, and Jamie Lyons able to break to play it back to Sajak. He works it across and finds Redman. Bison and Bees putting the pressure up high here. Sajak tries to find Line. Line's little tip on doesn't find his man. Instead, it comes back. Jamie Lyons going to get a chance to skate it in now. Finds a bit of support from Tom Long, who's dumped on his backside there. Big hit by Shane Moore. Shane Moore's going to look to play it out now, which he does. But unfortunately, Wiggins just gets inside Callum Best very easily. Sajak collects it in behind the net. He's been put under pressure by Greg Martin. Martin finishes his check, but the Bison are able to just keep it rotating in behind their own net as Sajak looks to play it out, and he finds support from Kieras. Kieras got Moria up his outside, and instead he goes for the dumb pin where Hemmings will go on the chase. Moria's free at the back door if they can find him. Moria's got it in behind. Tries to find the pass across to Lauko, but broken up by the Bees. Hemmings once again collects alongside on the net. Tries to work it across to Moria, but just held up by the Bees there. 
Hemmings once again battling there, but Lauko's got to get a chance to sniff it in front if he can, but it's broken up, and here goes the bees the other way. Don't forget, they pack a powerful punch. Seski works it across, finds his teammate Pinch. Pinch goes in and tries to find support, but doesn't. Hemmings has to collect now, but he's broken up by Nicky Watt, but it will come back to Hemmings. Hemmings is able to just take it to the zone at will and let's go. The shot broken up. Lauko tries to collect up the garbage, but the bees are actually able to clear it away. So here they now go forward again. Seski, look at him go. Tries to work it around, broken up neatly by the D, just there, it goes back against Seski. Tomanek skating across there, making the easy save. Well, unlucky there for the Bratnell Bees there, because Pinch had a free shot into the old Tomanek was scrambling all over the place to keep up, but luckily Pinch went for the pass back to Seski and didn't go for the shot. It was probably not a bad idea, because, I mean, the Nets was going back and forth and back and forth. He was not aware in position and managed to make the save. Instead, it was a bit more comfortable. Trying to find Terry Miles with that pass there, the Bees, but it comes to nothing, and they'll be able to take through the neutral zone. Bronnyman, sweet hands to take it through there. Cole Graham tries to clear it out, but uh, Thompson keeps in. He finds support in Bronnyman. Notice the change up in line. Chin seems to be out there now with Bronnyman and Thompson. Yeah. I think that's to counter what's going on in the top line with Seski. Here goes Calvert through the middle. Calvert trying to find Terry Miles. Terry Miles' is shot on the backhand is deflected high up and over by the Bison. Thompson works it back round the board. Smart little play there by Thompson. A lot of space, but not a single Bees player in it. So Redmond finds the pass through to Chin. He's going to gun it through the central zone now. Taking it wide, holds his man off comfortably. Thompson making his way to the net. Chin goes into a battle behind. Taking two Bees players with him, so there'll be a spare man somewhere on the ice. Puck held up against the boards at the moment. Finally, Chin's able to release it, and he gets it back out to the point where Kyrus is looking dangerous, but he just manages to slip and isn't able to get the pass off. Instead, he's going to try and group it in behind, but no Bison player on that side, and the Bees are going to come out. It almost seems like when the Bison get into the Bratnell Bees zone, then when they get the chance to set up, it's almost like they're on a power play. Well, it's a quite agree. Thompson, smart play there, nice little swivel. Lays off a pass to Chin, it just skated too far. Man free at the net, Bronyman was all to himself then. Pretty much could have had all his Christmases come at once. Here go the Bees out the other way, but it's broken up by Sajak. Bronyman's going to get a chance here on the good turnover pass. Bronyman puts it across. Oh, just tip wide there. Tom Long went very, very close indeed but it just didn't fall right for him. Yes. And so instead, Tom Long puts in a heavy hit and Marashi's forced to cover up. That was a great pass to Molly Bronneman there. Showed right on the money to Tom Long. Just couldn't get enough of his stick on him. Right? Agonisingly wide. Not of fans in the arena tonight. 1,076 or something like that. Might be wrong, might have miscounted that. Certainly is busy in it tonight. Certainly is... Uh, a good and what a game, especially if you're a Bison fan, you tune a lot. If you're a Bees fan, you'll be putting your heads in your hand and wondering, is it going to be another 12 niller? Because the way it's going, it could very well be. Bees trying to break out their zone, but the pass to Greg Martin fails as Sammy Zajac collects once again. He tries to play into Jamie Lyon. Lyon put under pressure from House, his teammate from ooh, last season at the Bees and the season before that as well. A bit of history between them two, not going to go into it. They're the Bison, they play up the water. That's a smart little pass, big check behind the play, but Wiggins will go into a battle on the boards. Player not interested in the puck, don't worry about it, Bison. Well, Ames collects it through Tom Long, work it back to Wiggins. And Jamie Lyon doing the work, throws a little chip. There goes Greg Martin out the other way now, finds it into the central zone. Callum Best going to take it forward, but he's eased off the puck by Sajak and Tony Revan, and the Bison going to get a chance. Oh, funny kick off the board there, help the Bees more than anything. Little slash there by Jamie Lyon on Nicky Watt, put Nicky on his backside. Callum Best forced to dump in, and Sajak going to be put under pressure by Nicky Watt. The only Watt remaining at the Bees is... Uh, Stands up very nicely to him, so the Bison will look to rotate through here now. Seems to be the, the B's game plan, put Seski and Pinch out there against the top line. Just go top line, top line and hope for the best. Bison, B's work it across, fine. Randall gets a shot off, which the next was pretty screened for. Those late starts say, yeah, let's just talk about this. The B's tonight, uh, the, they're not changing their line, they're going with it. Seski, Pinch and Nicky Watt would expect them to. And it's kind of forced Bison with the final change on the play. Because obviously when you're at home, you get the last choice of lines to go out on the ice. It's forced the Bison to change up, because Hemmings is now going out there with Moria and Lauko. Yeah, exactly, you've got, to, you've got to do something to uh, counter this, uh, well, I've got to say, fantastic top line that the Bracknell Bees have. These, especially Pinch and um, Seski, they've put up so many points, you've got to basically stop them to... Well, that's smart play here. The Bison are going to get another chance to break as Moria takes it forward. Moria given a little chip there by Randall that forces Morashi to scramble and make a very smart save in mind. Yeah, I mean, look, Seski, without doubt, I think most of us would say EPL player of the season. Because, I mean, Ed Courtney and Tony Hand and there's other guys like Dean Jameson, they all do great jobs. But no one really single-handedly, single-handedly, 
carries a club like Sesame. Exactly. So those players who run off there are great players. Obviously, you can't deny that, but they've had a great team around them. Sesky in, in particular has got, well, a very average team around him. And look at the points he's put up, 91 points. And if you look down the list, only four players have got double figures in this team. Here's Kiris on the far side, gets his shot off, Brassy saves, rebound in front, doesn't come to anything. Sorry, Dan, that's a jump in there, nearly a chance. Reynolds going to take it back into the zone now, easily gets a shot off, Brassy forced into another little flick and save. Yeah, I know, Seski and Steve even, Steve even admits it himself, he's the biggest impact player in the league. He's not, he's no Ed Courtney. I think if you were to put the two players side by side, Ed Courtney would be the better player, but... Sesky makes more of an impact on the game week in, week out than Ed Courtney does. Exactly, it's such a danger. And, and an ex example to his impact is, of course, we keep going back to it, that 12-0 defeat that here at this ring earlier in the season when he wasn't playing. Oakford works it across to find Redman, who dumps in to try and find Hemmings on the rotation. Hemmings does indeed win that ball battle and manages just to play it off to Chin. Instead, he takes it in and Spearing trying to work his way to the net. Great to see Scott back out on the ice once again. Certainly his grit will be up for this game. And obviously came through Brattles' development, shot across by Chin, finds Hemming on the wraparound. Oh, if there was a man back door, that would have been finished. And that's just how good Redman is. Stepped up into the play, took Terry Miles right out of it. Nicky Chin goes into a battle with Miles, and he'll come away with it now. And he gets a chance as Chin works it across, trying to find Hemmings. The spree in front, and said Spearing's going to collect it in behind. Scott Spearing used to be a D-man for the Bees all those years ago. He was never a forward. Move to Slab, cover forward. There's a lovely play in. There's a lovely shot, and that's a good save by Marashi. Sprawled out and just stopped Sam Oak from sneaking in to try and get another goal. But Chin's got it in behind again for the boys. Chin tries to dump one across neatly, and that's a nice save by Marashi. Going the other way, it was a tip for the five hole, and it was a very smart save on the move with six minutes and 55 to go in the first. Bison up by two, but it could be more if it wasn't for Marashi. Exactly, I was just going to point out, we keep going on how, how he impressed us in the other two meetings this season, but once again, he's. Well, the key he's got today, his positioning's been absolutely brilliant. He's, get, he's getting across the bar and just cutting off that shot. Kiris with the slap shot, and it just whistles past the post. Sammy Zajac, well, that was offside. It, didn't, it came out the zone, but don't worry about it. It goes in there. No lines in position. Line finishes his check. Long finishes his check. Line's actually going to try and scramble one in there, but can't. There's going to be a penalty call against the Bison now. Looks like Jamie Lyon's going to go into the box. So the Bees are going to get a go on the power play. Here they come out on the charge, though. Danny House going to take it in. Danny House gets off a shot and Tom Annette just very easily gloves it and it will indeed be Jamie Lyon coming into the box to join us. High sticking against Jamie Lyon. You've got to be kidding me. Jamie Lyon goes into the box then. Eight penalty minute of the season for Jamie Lyon for a high sticking call. Yeah, he's not happy about it. He was going off complaining. Wouldn't you though? I mean, because oh, yeah. it didn't... I could understand the slashing call because the stick came out of the hand. I can't understand a high stick then. There you are, this is why we should be on the BBC. We argue the referee scores, unlike Ballard and Pope. That's hey. why we're not on the BBC. That is true. Well, Bison lose the, won the draw, then lose it, so it comes back round to Seski. Here goes the B's number one, Pentacles in the lines. Randall plays it across, but no one there, not one that's interested. Bison step inside it, and might be able to sneak out the zone, but don't. Dumas plays it around that. That finds a pitch at the back door. Pitch is going to try and work it to Seski. Once again, there's the difference. The Bison passes on the power play, finding the take, finding the match, maybe a turnover in Mori and Lauko. Lauko's got it, works it back to Moria. Mori and Lauko, nearly a great opportunity. Seski come flying across there to try to take Lauko out. But once again, Lauko wins it. And Reynolds is going to just be able to take this out of the zone. Man coming out the uh, play, though, to try and collect it. Reynolds just dumps it in, and there you go. One minute, you've lost, got rid of 45 seconds of power play there. And here goes Moria again. Look at this. Who's on the power play here, my friends? Bison dump it in, forcing Marashi into the save, and then forcing him into the cover-up as well. There you are. One minute, and that's how you kill a power play. Exactly. It certainly looked like the Bracknell was starting to set up there, but the puck just... Once again, it's happened a couple of times in this game, just come off the off Greg Randall's stick and then out of the zone, and then for some reason it seems to deflect. Bracknell seems to lose it, and then suddenly it puts Space Stoke back in the game, and it really throws Bracknell off the, out of their rhythm. Well, definitely does. I believe Fabi's making a little mention towards a certain fan of mine and his on the forum. Very nice to see he's actually made it into the rink this evening. It's an offside play on the bison. Uh, don't worry, it's nothing to worry about. Basically, a man who turned round. Uh, I, I vowed I would not mention this uh, because I get quite pent up about this. He turned round, 
The Football Masters and the Nottingham Panthers want him all the time. Uh, my column, if you haven't read it, uh, I recommend you go and back order it because there's nothing really to worry about in it. And these two guys who do all the work for us, uh, Chris Key and Richard Stringer, fantastic. They've been all season long. The turnover for the boys, and though Nick Richie going to take it in, works it round Rashi, but it doesn't matter because Sean Thompson gets his first goal as he returns to the boys. Sean Thompson finishing it off nicely. Really good. That was excellent, poor turnover by the bees. Marashi hung out to dry, Chin did all the hard work, laid it off to Thompson. It's a short handy goal for the Bison. Five minutes and two to go in the first. Bison up by three, thanks to Sean Thompson, short hander. Exactly, and once again, what the Bracknell Bees were doing right there. It's an easy turnover, and Nicky Chin had all the time in the world to great individual play for him to just completely move Marashi out of position. And there was Sean Thompson on hand, and that's his first goal for the club. Once again, Bolt Action Media are going to get in the highlights. I'm sitting there telling them how good they are, how Babby's excellent, and how much my column didn't really matter too much. All of a sudden, Shin decides it's a good time to turn over, and it could be again. It's Warrior collects it in behind the net. Just keep mentioning them, and the Bison will keep scoring. I like that idea. Anyway, worked it to Mori, and Mori trying to work it around by Loco. Step by Sojo, put it in, son. Oh, he doesn't. Not to advise there. Pinks now collects this one. He's going to try and gut it forward. He works it into Sesame. Sesame takes it into the zone. Sesame's going to get a wrap round. Tries to lay it off for Pinks, and that's a very well worked goal. Miroslav Sesky take it into the zone nicely. The D man stood him up well, but he was able to lay off the pass. And who's there to bury the punt? If it isn't Sesky, it's my friend Pinks. One second left on the power play. The B's finding it on the scoreboard. Pinks, he has with four minutes and 30 left in the first period. That's exactly what Bracknell needed right there because they were start this game was starting to use switch just go right past them and uh, we talked about it Seski and Pinch how much of an impact players they are there and they really show there because it's great once again the chemistry that those two have it seems to be telepathic because they found each other and a great shot and X wasn't going to save that. No definitely not and once again Bo Action Media bring you a goal. Anyway, here go the bees. Then line putting you under pressure. Here goes Wiggins. That helps off from his hit there. Tom Lobs finishes his though like an express train. Worked up. Here goes Greg Martin up the far side. Danny House in at the net if he can find him. Maybe a boarding call. No, Renly doesn't call it. Red from able to play around neatly. Gets the pass out. Jamie Lyon's going to gun it up the near side. It. Jamie Lyon got Tom Long in support. Lyon plays it back. Finds Tom Long. Tom Long gets off the shot. Rashi rebound in front. Jamie Lyon, if he can finish that one, will get a goal. Well, battled in there with sticks and plenty in there, but the bees were able to get control of it. And Danny House dumps it down the ice and takes the chance to change the lines up. Three minutes and 45 to go here in the first. Bison up by three. Well, up by two. Three one. It is the score. The scoreboard. Getting ahead of myself as the Bison take it forward once again. There goes Bronyman. Bronyman gets off the shot, not far away at all. There, Chin collects the rebound. He's got Kieran in support instead. Dumps it back in and finds Bronyman in behind the net. Bronyman works it round and finds Chin, who's going to try and play out and hold his man up, but he doesn't. Kiris is able to collect. Kiris works it back to Nicky Chin on the wrong side, though, for a shot, so he has to work it across. Oh, nice little slash there by Randall. And Randall not happy with uh, Sean Thompson there. And the Bees are actually able to turn the puck over and just sneak it out of the zone. But all it does, it finds Kiris, who dumps it back into Thompson. Probably an offside on the play there again. Dumas plays it out of the zone, no icing on the play. So the Bison have to regroup with three minutes to go here in the first. Works around, finds Chin. Chin got Bronyman up the far side if he wants him. Instead, he plays it in neatly. Sweet interchange between Kiris and Chin. Chin's going to be able to get it out to the point. Maybe a chance for a slap shot. Goes for the pass, but it breaks up, and here they come out the other way now. Great work on the D to try and win it back. But Seski straight away trying to work into the zone. There's going to be a penalty call against the uh, the Bison here. They try and turn it over. Pinch collects it, works it across. Maybe a turnaround and shot instead. Sean Thompson steps across. And the Bison going to have to go on the power play, and they've already conceded one on the power play tonight, but they've also scored one. Exactly, and this is now a, a big moment for this game, because uh, so far the Bracknell Bees are lucky to only be conceded three goals, so now if it wasn't for their, the superb goalie of Adam Marashi, it would be much more, but this is a key moment now for Bracknell, because now they can put pressure on the Basingstoke... Uh, so, so, so I thought where well, the players were going there, but um, yeah, they can put the pressure on the Basingstoke Bison right at the end of the period, and this game can suddenly go from a... What was 3-0 to the Bison to 3-2 going in at the break? 
Iceland just about managed to win the face-off draw there and they're able to dump it out the zone. And all goes all the way down the other end, so there's 10 seconds of the power play over. Bison put the pressure up high. And it certainly is going to do a good job here. So what a way to win the period if the Bees are able to bring themselves back into this one, make it a one-goal game. Here goes Pinch on the fly, he's got Nicky Watt outside him, pass just doesn't find it. So Pinch having to do the chase in, Tony Redmond did it with two men, but it comes back out to Greg Randall. Greg Randall, plenty of assists, not many goals though for him this season. Shows that they go for a lot on his tips, here's Seski. Seski lets fly, but uh, Steve Morrier gets his stick in the way and that one disappears up towards the moon. And it's not come down. <laughs> It'll come down later on, it's still up there with that puck from uh, Kevin Conway shot in 1990. <laughs> It'll come down around the point, we'll have a multi-puck system in, in place. Hey, it's the Premier League, you never know. <laughs> Two minutes to go here in the period. 3-1 up the Bison, but uh, end of this period, the Bees just beginning to come into a little bit more, just beginning to look a little bit stronger as it works around, and uh, Bison able to, well, just clear out the zone. Wasn't much, and now Lauko's going to get a skate here, D-man. And he's going to get the other side of him, a stick being held on to Rene, far away from play, ain't going to see that. Lauko instead doing the hard work up there, and is able to win it. Is he going to be able to play it across by the pass? Goes in himself. And a big check came in there, but the Bison will be happy with that. Takes the power play right up the other end. Yeah, you can really see how much the base, uh, braces, uh, sorry, Bratnell defenseman there to defeat uh, Andre Lauk on the break. Because you can see Moore was coming back with him, but he didn't try to enter a race with him. He's just trying to hold him up for as long as possible. Definitely. Well, that one, to be fair, is that interference or is that not? Because I don't think he was really playing the puck. The puck was a great distance away. Yeah, it certainly looked like to me that he was deliberately playing the man, but... Oh well, 1 minute and 38 to go, stuff that, 1 minute to go on the power play now for the Beast. Can they get another goal to make this a one goal game? Sticky out there with their big guns, and Pinch is going to chase it in, putting Reynolds under pressure, but the trouble is no one else joins him. Sakiris is able to win the puck and clear it easily out of the zone, dumps all the way down the ice. 45 seconds to go on the Beast power play here. It's been a good first period once again, has to be said. As the Bees will try and now take it forward, it goes through the neutral zone through who else? But you have Seski. Seski skips over his man, but Stick gets in the way. Seski puts Reynolds in with a clash there, but Reynolds comes up stronger, isn't able to sneak the puck out of the zone. And instead it flips over, and I think it must have just been over the plexiglass because we're going to uh, have a face-off in the Bison zone with 30 seconds to go on Ollie Bonneman's penalty. No, we're going outside. We're going outside. I thought we were going to... Hey, you never know. It's like Mango Mango, this is. They're all twisting and turning, going wherever they want. It's someone's birthday in the rink, but uh, the Bison will be certainly hoping it's going to be better than that. It's Pinch now works it in. Pinch got it up the far side in. One last chance here with 20 seconds left on the B's power play. Pinch works it around and finds that man, Seski. Seski going to try and skip and slide away. Works it back out to Pinch. Man at the back door. If he finds it, the pass was there to Seski. Seski just not able to get a touch on it. 10 seconds to go on the B's power play as the Bison dump it in deep, and that should kill off. Uh, Ollie Bronneman's penalty, so he'll hop out the box about now, and we'll have 34 seconds left in the first period, and the Bison may get a turnover. Bronneman may get a chance, he comes flying out the box, first place he goes to is to the goal. So 26 seconds to go in the period, maybe the Bison can sneak another one into Chin! Broken up very neatly by the D, and the Bees are going to get one last chance to come out then. Ashley Calvert takes it, tries to take on Kurt Reynolds in a foot race, but Reynolds is able to win it. Reynolds in the battle along the board, plays it round, big flying check comes in there. Ten seconds, if Chin spots the cross ice pass, it's on. Here we go then, seven seconds left in the period, Sean Thompson, and it's an offside on the play as Oli Bronneman just skated in a moment too soon. Yeah, you can see there Oli Bronneman, he was ahead of the play, just waiting for them to enter the zone, but he just stepped in just a tad second too early, and it's almost a surprise that actually gave that an offside, because we've, we've seen it on times this season where they, that, those, those sorts of calls have just been missed. Definitely. So five seconds left. Don't expect any more goals, man. Uh, we're going over the other side now for some reason. Yeah, they keep moving the face. Is that the third time? They don't like the ice there. Yeah. It's a bit slippery, obviously. Uh, there's that patch of ice. Yeah. That patch, slippery yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah you, know, treacle. you know them well. well. No, it's not treacle, it's slippery. Treacle <laughs> keeps you upright. Bison win the face-off, so that's another one for the stats. But the most important stat of all is that at the end of the first period, the Bison are three goals. Up. And the uh, Bart and the Bees have got one goal, and it's been quite a good period once again. Yeah, a real local derby. Exactly, and I think this uh, period, the way that both sides have got to be happy, Bratton especially, that are only 3 1 down because they've given up a lot of shots this period, and it could easily be a lot more if it hadn't been for the goaltending of Adam Marashi. Well, definitely so. It should be an interesting uh, second period, and we'll be back after this break. Second period of action here is the base day Bison take on the Bracknell Bees. 
score at the end in the first period, of course. Face those lights are up by two. Finally could get that right. I'm actually not saying they're up by three. They're only up by two. Three one at the moment. Busy arena here. Thousand people still queues in the coffee area. It really is a fantastic night for ice hockey here in Basingstoke. A big Bracknell following. We had the marriage proposal before the start. She said yes. One minute into the game, the bees said yes. The bison said yes. But towards the end, maybe the bees were beginning to say yes a little bit as they started to come back into it a little bit. Yeah, they started to come back into it with that power play goal late on the period. And then that second power play right at the end, they were really starting to get into the game. And if they can start this period like they started the first, then they could really be into it. We could have a game on our hands. We could indeed have a game. Well, we've got a game on our hands now anyway. It always is a game here in the arena. You never know what's going to happen in the EPL. As the BJ would keep that one in the zone. They're trying to find Sesky in the net, but it just isn't Sesky not happy with that. And the Bison are able to regroup in behind their own net. The drummers to our left, the old Bison drummers, now the Bees drummers. Traitors, turncoats, no matter what you want to call them. Make it loud and proud, and our bison drummers are certainly giving it as best they've got as well. Hemmings' pass comes off Lauko's head, the Warriors' head even. Nice little knock on Lauko, still got it. Trying to take it into the zone, instead it comes back out. Seski's going to try and gun it up the far side for the bees. Seski working in, will get a shot off, but it's broken up off the stick, goes up onto the netting. 45 seconds into the second, we have a little break. <coughs> And I have to clear my throat. That was pleasant. I hope no one at home got that. I think everyone at home got that one. I think I think at that moment a little bit, a little bit of a floxum. Oh, floxum. No. Is that the word I'm looking? Is it floxum? No, no wonder your mic's mouldy. Is it floxum? Is that the word? Them. Hello. <laughs> yeah. If you did, if you missed the highlights last week. Uh, the, the first five takes I said value for the lawn. Just imagine a load of bison players in Kinky Ware. Cole Graham shot from the point, nearly tipped in there, but Ripper's able to get on the verge of it. Instead, it won't rotate around, and the fight bees trying to work it back in. Back out to Cole Graham on the point, who tries to work it around. Vice man Dumas making his way to the net, but can't because the bison are able to break it up. Smart play there by Reynolds, really rotating that well in his own zone. Bronyman collects it and plays it just out the zone, putting Chin under pressure. Instead, it's going to be collected by Bronyman. Bronyman, nice little slip inside his man. Takes it forward again, very nicely worked. Bronyman gets the shot off, disappears over. Chin keeps it within the Bison zone. Tries to wrap it around, but Terry Miles just breaks that one up. But there is that man, Sean Thompson, having a blinder tonight. And that one goes up into the crowd, where Graham Pierce drops it very neatly. Uh, now he's hurt his hand. <laughs> oh, dear, Graham Pierce. That's not a drop to make there. He could play for the England cricket team at that rate. Now he's got it. A fan's very kindly giving it to him, considering he drops it. I wouldn't have been that kind. I would have snapped it in my pocket and taken it home. <laughs> That's because you're a selfish, selfish 35-year-old, Graham. I'm not 35, I'm 22. Just get that point out there, please. I do look old, but that's only for years of having to stand around you, Dan. So, unfortunately. And, uh, well, the bees have a little slip, slop and slide there. But no too much damage as Terry Moles is able to correct it. And he's going to try and take it out of the zone. But Sean Thompson putting him under pressure, forcing the turnover. And Chimble going on the chase now. Marashi smart enough to just keep that puck alive. Good play there. Terry Moles and uh, someone having a word in there. But it comes back out. Free shot for Reynolds. Reynolds gets it off, but it takes a deflection off the stick. Goes up into the netting with 18.05 to go here in the second. Uh, Bison so far at the start, you have to be safe. You have to be safe. To read my program notes, it's just as good as You have to be safe that Bison have started well in this period. Exactly, uh, they've come out the better side and uh, we saw in the first period the shots on goal uh, 19 to 5 in Basin Stokes' favour, so they've they got a hell of a lot of shots. It just really shows how well Murashi played that first period. Well, exactly, but, but think about the conversion rates here as well as the Bison trying to gun it in, instead it's going to come out and then maybe going to turn it over instead. Wiggins comes in and takes Danny House down on the <laughs> ice quite comfortably there. Uh, Bison trying to regroup in their own zone. Yeah, but think of conversion rates. You only get five shots on goal, you score one, you're happy. You have 19 shots on and only score three, you're not so. As the Bees will regroup now through Greg Martin, who works across and finds Randall across. Randall tries to dump it in, but Kiris is alert and alive. And Jamie Lyon just sneaks out the zone. Kiris trying to find Tom Long, goes back to Wiggins. He isn't able to finish, and the Bison will try and clear him. They're looking for the penalty, but the Bees are going to get a little break in. So we take a ball by Callum Best against the layoff, and down goes Danny House, unfortunately. Was in a perfect situation there, probably to score, and luckily the fall over on the ice. And is Rene Ross giving a penalty against the Bison here? Or is it against the Bees? Looks like it's going to be against the Bees. I thought he was going to give the penalty for Danny House's trip then, to be honest. Is this a too many men call? Yeah, it's a Bees man. Terry Miles coming into the box while looking at things. Two minutes for high sticking once again. Finding the high sticks very well at the moment. 
It's going. Well, we've got both penalty boxes are actually ajar at the moment. The uh, Bracknell one's completely empty. It's a Bison player coming across. Jamie Lyne once again being called for high sticky. But I thought that there was a point towards the Bracknell box. So unless we're going to have two penalties, no, because the... Uh, I, think, I think it's one. just a confusion now of uh, who on earth could have got that penalty. Or so why? Five minutes on Jamie... Five minutes. Two minutes on number five, Jamie Lyne. He gets two minutes for high sticky. The second high sticky call of the game. And he had ten minutes. And here we go again, Bees on the power play, maybe a chance to make it a very neat 3-2 game, but they've got to win the draws and they don't, but that top line of theirs is out. As the Bison try and work out, Lauko just flicks it out the zone where Dumas will collect it. Dumas will now try and work it around and correct something, and he does find a pass into Pinch, who flicks a hole with his back heel on towards Seski. Seski will look for Nicky Watley, he's cleaned it to the ball there by Redmond, and he's straight away throwing the hooks there, maybe a hooking call should be given. Revan puts the Seski in hard to the board there. Seski not happy with that one at all. Really complaining at Rene Ross, and he's going to call him for it. Ten minute misconduct coming up against Seski. The complaining about the call by Tony Revan. It was a hard hit by Redmond. There's no doubt, but it was fair. Seski not happy with that at all, and he's going to take a ten minute sit down for words at Rene Ross. Yeah, it almost seems like Seski feels that Redman pushed him in head first into the boards there, but there, it looked like a fair hit from where we were standing, and the just keep complaining and he's going to sit down. This is a massive blow for Bracknell, especially as they're on the power play. Well, exactly, you lose your top man off your penalty kill line, your power play, your penalty kill line and your normal line. But the other bit on top of that is, you've got to sit with that for 10 minutes. What damage, I mean, we saw what damage the Bison did in 60 minutes for that test. We work on those averages, I think that works out at four goals for 20 minutes. So maybe if the Bison get two here, it could be a different game. Shane Moore then tries to work it around. Remember, the Bees are still on the power play at the moment. It's a shame. Moore out on the point then, he's going to try and work it in, all he does is find Nicky Watt on the far side here, who works it around, picks it up and plays strong roll, they go back to all, but the shot just wasn't there for Randall, comes back out on Watt, collects it, one minute and ten to go here, on the power play, Nicky Watt marshalling his troops out there as he goes back into pinch, Dumas trying to make his way to the net, he has to go back out, pinch being patient, finds another man, goes back out to Shane Moore on the point, Moore tries to shape it in nicely and the Bison are able to get it well sort of in control but it only comes out to Randall on the point who's able to play it back around and find Pinch once again Pinch plays it back out to Randall Randall going to try and rotate for a shot for a tip unfortunately Dumas was there for the tip but nothing comes of it and the Bison are going to get a little bit of a break here as Lauko goes steaming forward up our inside and Lauko's even beaten off the uh, check doesn't beat off that check though that was hard and heavy and Lauko will be hurt by that but the bees are going to come back out the other way as Dumas plays it onto Pinch Pinch trying to find Dumas at the net, but it's broken up very neatly there. Lauko comes back into the player and maybe has a little bit of damage to do after that check. Lauko one-on-one -on -one with his man. Lauko trying to gun it round. The D-man holds him up very nicely and actually breaks it up neatly. And Lauko will go take a sit down as the bees try and work it around again. 15 seconds left on their power play as Randall tries to take it forward. Chin just knocks him over lightly. Pinch works it across. Men coming on and off there. Terry Miles actually able to collect it. Pinch rotates it around to Moore, surely came out the zone, didn't, maybe a chance in front here for the Bees, is it broken up by the Bison, so the Bison come back to full strength, uh, as Seski continues his 10 minutes of his conduct, we've got about 8 minutes to go on that now, Shot comes in and disappears over, and uh, instead Kiris is able to collect within his own zone now, Kiris will rotate this run around with Chin, who finds him nicely, pass up the near side, is on if he wants it, two men are over here, Thompson's going to take this forward, Chin going to make his way to the net, Chin finds it, Ronnyman was gunning into the zone all by himself. Thompson goes in hard with a teammate, with a former teammate there. Terry Miles able to just sneak out the zone. That will go all the way up the ice. And we'll have an icing call if it crosses the blue line. No, it doesn't. We don't have an icing call. So on we go again, rotating round, finds Ronnyman off the board. Ronnyman works it across, finds Chin. Chin plays it in neatly, tries to find the end of Tom Long stick, but just doesn't. And now maybe the bees will go, Bison will go back. Turn over there, Nick, to Ronnie Ronnyman. I was about to say, maybe the, maybe the Bison are going to go back to their top of lines. Here goes Wiggins. Wiggins, ooh, knocked off the puck there by Ashley Calvert. Give Calvert credit for standing in there. Wiggins now has it around the board at the back, and he's going to try and rotate something on this play, but Wiggins may get a shot of himself! Wiggins! 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 Good work along the board. That's where he's in. Extremely dangerous. Just able to take it off the board. Let fly. Wiggins! Wham! Bam! Bison celebrate. 14-12 to go in the second, and the boys are the 4-1 up, thanks to a stunner from Chris Wiggins. Yeah, superb individual goal there, he really showed, is it? We've been talking about all season now, he's got great hands on him, and he showed it there. 
and the strength of his holds off the, uh, the Bracknell defenders, unless of a great wrist shot at this top corner. Lovely. Oh, oh, stunning. That's what, I mean... No, I've got to be honest with you. Chris Wiggins, OK, maybe there's a little bit sort of... Oh, he's going to get another chance here if he does this one in right. And Jamie Lyons back door. Where is it? Tom Long stops this, goes wide. Well, Wiggins then collects again, tries to work it across. But he's held up by his man, and the bees are able to dump it out the zone. Sammy Zajac having to go back on the chase under pressure from Greg Martin. Greg Martin plays it around the points to Tony Redmond. And now it's held up against the ball as Danny House puts the pressure on. We've said it all year about Chris Wiggins, just what a player he is, what we think he could be. And here go the Bison on another break. Tom Long's going to stay in, he's shot, Marashi. Comes up the big strong save, they're keeping it for one. Yeah, Chris Wiggins, we've shown around all season long. We both rated him since the moment we came here. I mean, at the end of the day, I rated him back when he played for Guildford back in the PNL, he was 16. I mean, his sheer size alone helps him, but he does have some great hands on his well. Dad, he's got a lot of uh, attributes that you want in hockey, but actually he's massive. He's extremely strong. He's, he's got great strength. He's got great stick handling skills. <laughs> Good shot on him, and uh, he's not afraid to uh, drop the gloves every once in a while either. We've said it all season long. He will step up to the elite league at some point. There's no doubt in my mind. Someone will want him because he's a commodity. That's not being harsh, he's a good hockey player, but also he's got something that not many British players have. He comes out to Kyrus on the point, who wraps it around and tries to find the support at the back door. Hemmings plays it back out to Kyrus, who plays it well, back in, but Nicky Watt finishes the check. Hemmings will put the pressure on the uh, Bees D and try and force the turnover, and he does so, but getting up the inside, smart play by Hemmings there. Works it back round to Lauko. Lauko going to try and find a bit of support back door. Does, back to Lauko. Lauko shoots, nice little save there by Marashi, give him credit. Bison still able to keep that puck in the zone, though. We talked about two goals while Seski's down in the bin. It could happen. Trying to find Moria on the tip in front. Doesn't come back round. Moria snapshot, shot, rebound. Marassi, great double save there. Maybe even a triple save. Absolutely stunning play there by Marassi. He's been hung out to dry here, left, right and centre. And all he does is just keep standing up time after time after time. That's three shots there, that's no goal, when really, other net minders in this league would have conceded goal to Yeah, he's made some fantastic saving once again here. Yeah, that looked like a triple save, and he's just shot after shot after. He couldn't control a rebound, but he got back into position quickly and made some fine saves there. It's five on five, but you wouldn't believe it. As the Bison turn it around, trying to find Chin. Chin just wasn't able to get the shot off, went the wrong way on the uh, skates. So Revan plays it across, but the Bison will just be patient here. Dump it back in, and Chin will go in on the... Uh, Four check and might even win that one. Works it across. That was nearly a nice little chance. Instead, the bees are going to get a chance to break it. Terry Miles takes it up the inside here. Miles tries to find Dumas. Dumas is just well plays it off and only finds Miles just in the end. Miles going to get a chance to rotate though. He lets fly a shot and Tom Alex comes up with the glove save and palms it over. Scott Spearing starts to work on the far side there, but the uh, bees are able to re rotate it. And instead, it comes back out and Nicky Chin will just put his cool calm collected head on this one. And a nice little skip and a jump and a play away and the boys are going to get a chance to break it. Nicky Chin just taking it up for fun, takes three players out of the game. Work far side, Redmond going to try and find a bit of support. And just back does as he finds Nicky Chin, comes back out. Actually, that Redmond there, who was that? Oh, for too many twos on that back line. Spearing goes in and collects the puck in behind the net. Spearing works it back out to Oakford. Oakford plays it in, goes for the tip. Not far away there by Sean Thompson. Chin once again tries to win the puck on a battle. And instead comes out the boys are going to have to regroup in their own zone. Turnover nearly there by Redmond. Might fall into Terry Miles' favour. Luckily, nothing could come of it because the... Uh, <coughs> The bees are at sixes and sevens out there, and that's a poor turnover, and maybe a chance for Ashley Calvert, and he skips around his man once, but he can't do the skip to the loo twice. Instead, it has to come back out, and the bison put the pressure on the bees high up the ice as Callum Best tries to lay it off, but Chris Wiggins just steps in. Look at the confidence the goal brings to that. He's going to gun it into the zone again. Sticks all over the place trying to stop him going to the net. They're not going to go with the body. They're just going to go with the sticks. Wiggins putting hard on the ball, but Tom Long comes in support. Still a bit of continuation afterwards. Buying oh, there. Tap there. And Randall with a big slash on Wiggins. Hey, give Wiggy credit. He pulls penalties as well now. What else can he do? That's a silly penalty. You need a guy like Greg Randall out on the ice right now. He controls the D for the, for the Bees. He's their, probably their best assist player from the point. And he gives up a stupid penalty, dare I say, against a third line player that is needless when you've got another man in the box there in Yaroslav Seski. It's an absolutely pointless penalty, and all it does it offers the boys another power play opportunity. Yeah, Terry Miles went over to uh, Renny Ross there. I don't know what he's complaining about. It's a short, definite slash of Belgium. As you say, stupid. 
because it was way it was miles off the play as well. Nothing could have come from it. Kiris then works it wide here. Bison on the power play. Kiris going to look for it. That's top line out there. Kiris gets it. Goes to the tip for Moria, but Marashi is down on it. Michael Walsman uh, gathers his uh, meat very comfortably with just 10 seconds on that play. Play gone. Yeah, this is what I don't understand. This is where maybe. Randall's not an inexperienced guy, he's quite an old bloke. Go on, let me give you his age. 41. He's been around the league enough. He's played for MK when they're successful. Bison win the puck. There's a shot by Kurt Reynolds just deflected away, and Ryan Watts actually helps clear it out. But you shouldn't be giving penalties like that. Ryan Watt, Nicky Watt, they're both the same. <laughs> I knew you'd get it wrong at some point. But yeah, it was going to have to have a was Wiggins was out of the play by then as well. He, he, he took offence to the hit, but I mean, tangled up. But Randall did not need to just slash him. Reynolds works it round and finds Tom Long, who guns it round the far side where he finds Moria at the back door. Moria just going to set this one up, works it back to the point for Kiris. He's going to maybe get a clear shot off, doesn't. Works it to Steve Moria. Steve Moria works it around to Tom Long. Tom Long got it near post there, just trying to find the man. Carter works it back to Kiris. Kiris lets fly for the tip. Great glove save there by Marashi. Standing strong. I don't think he gets enough credit for this, Marashi. He really is saving the side for one minute and seven to go on the Bison power play. You've got, to, you've got to think the way this game's going so far, the way that uh, Marash is played, you've got to hope that they keep stick with him for the rest of the game, not do the, pull the stunt like they did last time and bring an Ambler, because he's it's had a great game so far. But yeah, we're going back to looking at what we just saw on the power play, it's not hard to see why Bates are finding it so easy to uh, find space, because yeah, once the player goes down behind the goal, all the Br Brattle players just come in and pack the net, and it's, all the other players are unmarked. Chin plays it off to Kiris, Kiris oh, shapes to shoot but doesn't. Works it back to Chin, back out to Kiris, back into Chin. Free shot if he wants it, Chin plays it in near post. Back to Chin, shot, good pad, save there by Rashi, going the other way. Stuck the leg out, back again, work round. Nicky Chin collects it on the far side here. Back in, that's nicely played. Hemmings just his name to get the shot off and uh, going to be a bit of pressure on here by Miles, but Kiris stands up to it neatly and takes his man well and truly out. That's a lovely cross ice pass, it's just a shame. It didn't fall to Hemmings' stick and the bees going to clear it out, but they only get it up to the red line as Kiris is able to collect it in there. Works in, finds Ollie Bronyman. Bronyman's got ice to skate into if he wants to use it. Takes it into the corner, 20 seconds left on the power play. Works back out to Redmond on the point. Redmond into Chin. Chin back to Redmond. Redmond going to let go here, surely. No, he doesn't. Works it to Chin. Back to Redmond. Shapes to shoot. Goes near post with a little tip. Marashi and the Dean staying strong. Nine seconds left on the power play for the Bison. Chin's got it in there. He's just going to try and rotate this around and try and find something in the dying embers. There's a big shot, but the beast's going to get the great man coming out of the box. Randall's going to collect this one, maybe play into Dumas at the net. Oh, well stood up there. Tony Redmond, it's going to come back out, but once again, the stick of uh, Hemmings just isn't able to collect the puck in. So Randall, well, that was a poor turnaround by Redmond. Then really sort of opened up the ice for Randall. Instead, he's just able to sneak it out. And the bees are going to have to regroup, and the change of lines happen. That's a great interception, though, by Tom Long. Plays it off to Jamie Lyne. Jamie Lyne going to get a go in on the... Oh, just couldn't take the puck with him, unfortunately. Stood up very nicely there by Shane Moore. Instead, the bees are going to try and go out the zone now. That's a smart little cross eyes pass. It's going to force Cole Graham to skate into space. And he just isn't able to. Sam Oakman standing up. Wiggins plays it off the board and will force Lyne in on the chase. Jamie Lyne putting his man under pressure. Worked around the far side. Expect Tom Long to go all guns blazing on Nicky Watt. Which he does nicely. And Nicky Watt's able to work that one around nicely. So this could be a danger time here for the uh, for the bit for the Bison even because I mean Pinch is out there at the moment and he goes to the cross ice, finds it very nicely. And Nicky Watt will gun it forward. Nicky Watt's shot broken up, Nick completely pointless shot. Oakford's skate gets in the way. Seski's still down in the box. Must be coming to the end of his power play of his uh, ten-minute misconduct. Well, at least he's going to be well rested when he comes out. I think, I think Bratnow, I've got to say, they must be pleased with the way the game's gone for, while he's been out of the box. I mean, they've only given up one since he's been down for that penalty. I mean, that's probably the best they could have hoped for. Bison have had so much advantage there. I mean, I, I can't remember the, the Bees even producing anything in this ten minutes. That's an honest fact. I mean, they had, they had a power play, but the Bison weren't able to use it. But at the same time, it's just been Bison pressure as Lauko now tries to work out the near side. Lauko going to try and work it in a five Mori. Instead, he has to turn around. It comes back out to Mindy Kiris. Kiris is going to get a bit of open space for a shot. Falls in front, rebound. Marashi able to make the pad save. Bison rotate around again through Lauko. Lauko finds the man in front. Kiris works it across and nearly finished there by Andy Hemmings. Not far away at all. The board battle continues on the far side there. Nicely kicked in by Sajak, keeping that alive. And the bees are only just able to scramble it away. And Lauko forced to go back down the ice. Just over seven minutes to go here in the second period. Bison up by three. 
pass finds Hemmings, nice pass inside, just doesn't find Moria. But he's going to get a chance to regroup as Randall lays it off and Pinch, and Pinch trying to find that big snap pass, and he does. Calvert with the shot, rebound, Nicky Watt maybe should have just got a stick on that and tried to two-hand it in there, but he didn't. Work back around and oh, that's where communication breaks up. Pinch was desperate for the shot there, and Nicky Watt just stepped in and wasn't able to get it, and the Bison able to just sneak it out the zone. And uh, Lauko will put the pressure on Carl Graham at the back. Carl Graham didn't know he was there. Lauko turnover. Lauko tries to work it round by Moriam at the uh, B's defence. Managed to hold strong there. And now they'll come back out the other way. Gunned up the near side of Ashley Calvert. Been very impressive as he stepped up in Seski's boots. And he's going to get a chance to go in here. Nicky Watt tries to finish, but the Bison D stays strong once again. Now the Bison want this putt just to stay in play as long as possible. Because it means Seski sits in the box. Nicky Chin going back in on the back check there. Cole Graham doing hard work and chin there, he plays it off the board nicely, pass. He might as well just play with himself really there, because he just played it nicely off the board with a nice pass the other way. No double entendre there, fans. <laughs> bees pressure in the zone, turnover puck, but it just comes out and the Bees will push it up the ice, no icing on the play, so uh, Claude Dumas will put the pressure on the D-man. And the D's Kurt Reynolds just neatly plays that one away. Five minutes and 40 to go here in the second. Only one goal in the period, but that doesn't really tell the story. As it's nicely worked forward there by Sean Thompson. Sean Thompson just manages to keep it in the zone with Nicky Chin, but the B's able to regroup then. And Dumas will dump it in for Terry Miles to chase. Miles is the other side of Reynolds, but Reynolds holds strong. And the support comes in. And the Bison are able to come back out the other way. Smart play there by Kiris. They're really being given as much of the ice as they like. Work back out to Bronyman. Bronyman into Kiris, tries to find Chin and Thompson. Thompson managing to keep it in the zone as the Bison were looking to make the change there rather than actually rotate it. Five minutes to go now. And a poor turnover finds Wiggins. Wiggins able to take two men out. Chris Wiggins goes inside, shoots. Rashi makes the same rebound. Sean Thompson stuck just past the post. Jamie Lyon battles inside and maybe another turnover. No, the Bees are actually able to take control of that one. And uh, well, Dumas tried to play out, but can't as Chris Wiggins stands him up very nicely. Dumas goes down on the ice looking for the penalty. Nothing going to be given there. Bison able to rotate it. Look how long Seski's misconduct is pretty much going on now. Tom Long chases in. He's going to win that battle, surely. Terry Miles tries to go with the body, but Tom Long able to keep it. And a penalty call coming against the Bees. Chris Wiggins then going to rotate it around. Works it back out to the point. There's a the shot, comes in, goes for the tip. Puck was free, Marashi held strong. So Yaroslav Seski comes out the box for the Bees. Great news for the Bees fan, uses another blow to go in two minutes. And on and unsurprisingly there, Seski comes straight out of the box and straight onto the ice to uh, take his place in the face for this play. Terry Miles goes... Oh, Freddy's liking his high sticker tonight, isn't he? Ooh. It's the flavour of the week. I thought that was Smokey Bacon. I thought that was Smokey Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> it's high sticking now. Bison with another power play there as he comes back out to Redmond. Redmond wraps it around and finds Moria back door, but all he can do is flick it onto Lauko. Lauko collects in and works it back to Moria. Moria, look at the men rushing to the net. Moria going to take it round the far side. Throws on the anchors and tries to work to the man in front, but instead goes out to Kiris on the point. Kiris trying to rotate around, does so. Finds Lauko. Lauko giving ice to stay shooting. Moria going to get the rebound off the board. Marashi just managed to get a little glove in there that poked in his favour. Instead, Tom Long collects now. Tom Long going to look to rotate, and he does find Moria. Moria's got it in behind the net. Tries to find Lauko. Instead, the Beast might get a chance to break all by himself. In. Pinch, Seski trying to get up in support like a bat out of hell. Pinch got it, lays it off to Seski. Seski shot, good save there by Annette. Annette comes back out the other way now. Not Annette, doesn't the Bison come out the other way? Work round, trying to go set it up once again as Lauko lays it off neatly to Kiras, back to Redmond. Redmond with the shot! Big wide there, and Lauko's going to collect that one in along the boards. One minute to go then on the Bison power play, the four pass. Gives Seski a chance to break, two or two break here, Seski and Pinch together. Seski lays it off, Pinch. Looks for Seski back door, Tom and comes up with a good bad save there. Boys to come back out the other way, Tom Long goes up ice. And we're going to have a whistle on the Too play here. Men. Too many men coming against the Bison. Paul Brooks jumps in once again, my favourite linesman in the league. So the Bison are going to get two minutes for two minutes. Yeah, and just going back to that play there, Bracknell's chance. Once again, look at just Chesky and Pinch just linking up. Somehow uh, Pinch found Seski, but Tom has got across there and got his paddle in and a good save. And then once again, we see another Bison, another bench miner for the Bison. We've, we've seen a couple of these this season, haven't we? Well, it seems to have died off in recent weeks, to be honest with you. I mean, 
I don't know why it is. Maybe the fact that Craig's just over there by himself. Now with Scott back playing, maybe it means he's able to take more control of the benches. He knows what's going on. But instead, we're going to have four on four hockey down. That means that there's more space on the ice. Yeah, we've got four on four hockey. That means there's more space on the ice, Graham. Thank you very much indeed. That's a uh, one for those people who watched the first ever DVD of ours, that one. Pure comedy, that was. <laughs> the highest order. Sean Thompson wins the draw then. So we've got 44 seconds of four on four hockey. And then the bees will go on the power play with Nicky Chin sitting the bench with Miner. So here go the vice and then Kurt Reynolds takes him out the zone. Reynolds dumps in for Thompson to chase. Rashi was putting his hand up for the icing that was never going to come. Thompson finishes his hit very large and he puts the pressure on. Little slash afterwards there by Shane Moore. It comes back out. Oakford works it around. I thought Oakford was going to let fly then. <laughs> Oakford's got it. 15 seconds of four on four left. Sean Thompson collects it in after the board battle. Thompson takes it in behind, takes his D-man out of the play. Wrap around, shoot, Marashi comes up with another good save. <laughs> you see Oakford getting forward there. It's almost like he was trying to score his first goal of the season. It'll be nice to do 15 assists, though, so the Bees come back out at full strength. Danny House collects it here on the far side. He's going to try and work it in by Terry Miles. Terry Miles gets it, but the Bison sticks get in the way with two minutes and 16 to go in the second period. Bison pull one up, but they're obviously on the penalty kill at the moment for another one minute and six after that bench minor penalty. Look over at Wolfies, Daniel. The lights are on, the flags are up. Were those, were those flags there when we came in? Yeah, they were. They've been up there. It, it's funny because we've got... It looks like a Cuban flag. That's the Texas flag, right? That's the Texas flag, right? OK, got that one wrong. My uh, history of the world. But look at it, it looks great, doesn't it? You have to say. Where's the British flag, right? That being picked. B's going to get the win the face off draw then, trying to work it around. Taking in on the far side. Don't shake your head. Taking in on the far side here. Back out to Shane Moore. He works it back into Pinch. Pinch back into Nicky Watt. Nicky Watt trying to rotate it around. Comes back out to Shane Moore. Shane Moore's going to let fly in for a tip. And Nets is alive and well to it, and so is Mindy Kiris as he clears it right down the ice. 43 seconds left on the power play for the Bison at the moment. We're just over one minute and 45 to go in the period as the Bees are going to regroup, go long and find Pinch. Pinch got Nicky Watt out here all by himself. Tries to find the pass, Tony Redman up in attack, got no stick. He's playing with no stick at the moment, will finally make his way over to the bench as Steve Morrier clears it down the ice. Bees regroup in their own zone. Look at them all gunning, there's Seski and Pinch up the far side, and there's one of them, Seski, the real carrier of the team here as he takes it forward, work, tries to work it around and find Pinch, broken up, but it comes back out to Seski, Seski going to work it around it, back to Randall, Randall shot for the tip, and Tom and X comes up with a very smart club save there, a lot of bodies in front of that, could have tipped top and toed anywhere, but all it did was it found Tom and X glove, with three seconds left on the Bees power play, and it comes up big as the Bison remains full exactly. right from. Exactly, a good save there. It looked like it seemed to hit something on the way up and uh, bounce up, but Tom and Etz was there to snatch the puck out of mid-air. He's good, he is, isn't he? He's good. Yeah, well, we, we have been talking about him all season. True point. Bison regrouping behind their net as the penalty comes out. Chin jumps straight back into the play, flicks it on. No icing on the play, so Wally Bronyman's going to put the pressure on. Randall behind the net, poor play by Randall. Maybe a chance. Bronyman, Chin! Hadwell got in, surely it hasn't. How did that not go in? Great save by Marashi. Give him absolute full credit there for coming up with that one because the Bison could have been looking at a full goal lead going into the third period. Instead, it remains 4 1. I love to look at a uh, replay of that because that, I can't believe how that didn't go in. Great. Once again, Adam Marashi somehow for, stopped that puck from running. It just seemed to hit everything along the line except going into the back of the net. And uh, Yaroslav Seski put down on his backside and he's going to go over and have a word with René Ross. Oh, no, he doesn't. Marashi wasn't happy. That's why that oh, one's no, standing. Oh, he's Always having a word. Send him away. Send him away another again. ten minutes. Go on, it'd be hilarious. Happy. <laughs> 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 Great choice of music. Anyway, 56 seconds to go here. Thompson doesn't win the face-off as it goes back to Randall. He's going to regroup it. Oh, that's a dangerous pass across his own zone there, but he comes away with it. Instead, it works back out to Redmond and to... Chin has got it here, Nicky Chin, remember him, the captain. Nicky Chin then regroups it on the near side here, and he works it back across and finds Kurt Reynolds, who uh, just opened his legs at the wrong moment, then it went through the other way. Oakford now collects it. Oakford plays it off the board and finds Chin, and Chin's going to get a gun in here. Two-on-one situation for the Bison. Nicky Chin takes it in, tries to go top shelf where Mama keeps the uh, jam, but doesn't. And instead, uh, I'm not sure what's going on here with 26 seconds to go in the period. Good play there from the Brandon defenseman, though, because he, 
You can see that Chin was really playing for the pass to Bronneman, but he got across cover Bronneman and also pushed Chin out wide. So the, the, to, the angle was narrower, and he, as we saw, he couldn't get the shot in. Good credit given there. Well spotted, Daniel. Well oh, I know. You don't get this sort of analysis from Brent Pope. He's just telling you which players he played with. You played with any of them? <laughs> Have you played with any of them? Uh, no. No, thought not. Anyway, come, no. it comes back out, works around then. Vice are going to maybe get one last chance here. Tom Long collects that very neatly, tries to find Jamie Lyon in front. Just can't. Tom Long on the ball battle with 15 seconds to go. Long throws it across. Wiggins may be able to get inside his man. Does so very nicely. Bit of a battle there, but Jamie Lyon's able to collect it. Five seconds. Going to have to get a shot off quickly. Lyon does. And Barashi has to come up very strongly at the near post. Did he have a coronary attack there? <laughs> uh, I Rashi. hope so. <laughs> Rashi got across, pushed it over. 2.5 seconds left here in the period. Another good period of hockey, has to be said, but it's been Bison, Bison, Bison. Bison. Uh, so the Bison pretty much dominated the first period, and the second period they've managed to dominate a bit more than even the... Oh, so, but... Redmond just wasn't able to get off the shot. Terry Miles did a bit of a diving stop in front of that one, shutting that one down. Only a goal in the period, but what a goal it was by Chris Wiggins. An absolute bullet into the top four. Yeah, a great solo effort, but... Once again, it's all about Bracknell's goal in that period because the Bison just laid his goal once again under siege. Um, and it's come time and time again, he's come up big and well, it's only 4-1. Well, it should really have been 5-1. I mean, that save at the end there by Marashi was very good indeed. Bison no doubt helped by that 10-minute misconduct that Seski picked up, but at the same time, they didn't really punish him. Yeah, exactly, they'll be disappointed they didn't make more of that, but it uh, took, took him out of the game for more, well, more than 10 minutes because the part just wouldn't go out of play and Bracknell was just completely out of the game for that period of time. Well, indeed, let's see what happens in the third period, then we'll be back after this quick little break. <laughs> Hello, hockey fans, welcome back to the third and final period here of action. As Mason and Bison say, God, the Bracknell will be score at the end of the second, 4-1 to the Bison, just the one goal coming in the second period, big one back. Finished it nicely for the Bison. Put the 4 1 in front, this really could be. An interesting final period because if the Bees come out, they pack a punch. You know they do. Guys like Seski, guys like Pitch, heck, even guys like Nicky Watt giving credit. He's got over 20 goals. I think he must be going on for a career high for Nicky, but he does do a good job. They pack a punch, the Bees. I think the earlier the Bison score, the more they're going to run up. If they leave it late, this could be quite a chasing the affair again. Yeah, exactly. I think uh, the, the way the West of this game is going to go depends on the uh, Bratton Beast defending because once again they are going to give up a lot of shots, 16 in the last period, whereas Bratton could only manage five. So they are. We do expect them to give up a hell of a lot of shots, and obviously Bratton will, will need a pretty high conversion rate with theirs. Is that a technical term, Hell? Is that a technical term? Lauko got it in the zone now. He's going to try and work it around to Hemmings. Hemmings plays it around and tries to find Mori, but instead he comes back out to Nicky Watt. Don't worry, don't listen to me. Flicks across the zone by Pinch. Nicky Watt trying to gun it into the middle, but he's held up there very neatly by Sam Oakman. Watt still gets off a shot, and, uh, well, I don't think Tommy and Epps will be too pleased with Mindy Kiras on that one there, getting in front of him, and nearly affecting it with a deflection. Instead, the Bison can be able to regroup, and they'll come out of the zone now through Lauko. Lauko being allowed that centralised skates past one, can't get past two, though. And the Bees are going to be able to turn this into their favour because the Bison were chasing their lineup. Pinch working across, trying to find Dumas, but he's uh, played off the uh, puck there by Chin. Dumas got back, but now the Bison are going to get a chance to gun it through the zone all by themselves. Played on very nicely, finds Nicky Chin. Nicky Chin works it, he's going to get one shot off here in close. Played it back across, nearly finished off there. Great work by Nicky Chin. Paul Marashi left right and centre, just wasn't able to finish, and Calvert plays it across now. Dumas trying to make his way into that. Sesky still out there for the Bees. Instead, there's a turnover, no hooking on the play. Oh, eventually it does come. It was a bit of a gimme call, that one. Instead, it's going to go for interference. It was a hook, if anything. It wasn't really interference. Yeah, and uh, Redmond's none too pleased. You can, you can hear him from up here. He was really not happy. Well, he made more of that than he had to. And uh, looks like uh, Rene Ross isn't too impressed. It looks like we're going to have another boy in the box. No, it isn't. So Tony no, Redmond. Things up there. Interference not against Tony Redmond. It's actually going oh, against... Maybe we are. <laughs> so it must be a 2 plus 10. I would like him so. Seeing the spearing. Uh, uh, Spearing's gone into Jordan Redmond. So two plus uh, ten. Must be an unsportsmanlike or something. Because the way Redmond had a go at um, Rene. No, actually, oh, no. it might be an illegal change. So, Bison. Well, there's two two minutes on the clock, but there's four Bison players on the ice. 
Would someone like to explain this one to me? We've got two two-minute penalties on the clock. Oh, wait and see what Baffy has to, has to tell us. No, finally a bicycle guy does disappear. So we go to five on three. Well, the bees wanted a strong start for the third. This could be their perfect opportunity here. Five on three power play in full two minutes. And it comes back out to Greg Randall. Randall's able to rotate round and find Seski. Man free at the net for the uh, bees at the moment. Instead, Seski's got it. Comes back around, finds Greg Randall. Randall works it across, finds Dumas. Dumas is shot, whistles past the post. And finally, the Bison are able to wrap it off the ball. Takes a nice deflection. So it's two for uh, interference no, on Redmond. Two for delay of game. And two for delay of game. Bench minor, second one of the game for the Bison. Could be costly. Well broken up there on the point, and Mori is going to skate in here. Mori is going to get an opportunity to let go. Rashi comes up the five hole there very nicely. Now the playoff. One minute, 24, 23 to go now on the uh, five or three opportunity for the Bison. Nicky Watt takes it forward, instead lays it off very nicely to uh, Dumas, who plays it wide and finds a bit of support from Randall. He works it back in, tries to find Pinch, but just isn't able to. Pinch holds up, Reynolds nicely, and will get the turnover at the puck here. One minute and five to go on the five on three. Desperately calling for it on the far side there. The shot comes in, and it's saved. And all oh, but how was that not finished? that not go in? The net was completely empty for him. B still got it, though. Randall works it around, finds Seski. Back around, man in front for the Bees, five on three, you've got to favour them here. Spools off the end of Seski's stick, Reynolds puts him into the boards. Kieras fancies his chances here to win that one. He's been dragged out of position, Nicky Watt collects it in behind. 40 seconds on the five on three, cuts back out, Shane Moore will let him fly here. Shane Moore shoots, saved by Annette, and Kieras able to just flick out the zone. Great five on three play there by the Bison. They clear it down the ice, 30 seconds to go. Randall's going to try and bring it back into the zone now. Randall lays it off and finds Seski very nicely. Seski works it back and finds Nicky Watt. Back to Seski. Back to Randall on the point. Randall will probably let fly. He doesn't. Lays it off. Goes across and they're rotating it around, but they're not sure where the passes are going, the beats. Still in close. 12 seconds of five on three. Bison able to break up another opportunity there. Eight seconds. Here comes the danger. Seski's got it wide. He works it in close. But the Bison are closing down the D at every opportunity. Nicky Watt collects it fast. So I fight to kill the five on three. Stage is still on. But the shot comes in. Come on, that's right. Two minutes of five or three at the start of the third. The Bison still off even. Yeah, that's a great penalty kill from the Bison. Uh, pretty much shut down the bees apart from that one chance that, that somehow Nicky Watt couldn't turn in. Would you stop doing that? <laughs> oh, what a shame our cameraman's is get the camera on you for the start. Thing. No people can see us and how embarrassing it is. Not really, they enjoy it. Bees win the face off though, trying to work it round. Chance in front and it keeps it alive and finds his man round the back. Instead, it comes across. Bronneman plays it in and finds Chin. Chin tries to take it up the far side. Instead, he finds a bit of support from Thompson. Thompson's shot from outside the zone. Disappears past the boat post, and the Bees are able to just get it back out. Back to Sami Zajac, who dumps it back in. The GB Face Park champion sponsored shirt tonight, fans. Good combination, those two are. One of them's a commentator for BBC, and the other one's a uh, skeleton person. Here goes Calvert, chasing into the zone. But the Bison get very nicely on the other side there. Great work by Tony Redman, really strong D play there. Just yeah. got the other side of his man and took him right out of the play. You see Sammy's uh, stage out there trying to put the hip check on, but it didn't quite come off. Chin now has it on the far side here. Bison going to work it in towards the net and Chin going to rotate it around. Back out to Kiris on the point. No, Kiris will now try and set up something. He goes in deep, now it's Chin in front. Left all alone, Swivel works it back out to Stajak on the point. Put it in, son! Ball goes in, but the uh, shot is broken up. Still rebound in front. Stajak now has to go on the back check where it will go down the ice for an icing call. 15 and 36 to go here in the final period of action. The end three darts, the last one here at the arena this season. Bison up by four. Three. Four goals. It doesn't matter. Come no. on! They've got a scoreboard at home. They can see it. Don't worry. Fifteen, thirty-six to go in. Well, how is this going to sway in the end of this period? How is it going to go on? Wiggins goes in for the battle along the boards. Instead, it's going to be Jamie Lyon. He's going to put Calvert under a lot of pressure, and he can only work out to Reynolds on the point. Reynolds plays back in. Fight to line. Line swivel and shoot. Nice save by Rashi. Big check comes in afterwards, and the slips off and slide there. For Terry Miles as the uh, bees now come forward through Carl Graham. Carl Graham tries to find Gaul oh, Calvert on the tip. Was it far away? And the boys are going to come out on themselves at speed. Jamie Lyon guns it. Chris Wiggins will be making his way towards the net. Lyon shot. Pad saved by Marashi. Rebound in front. No one knows where it one is. He's a finish there, and the bees are going to be able to come back out the other way now. Ashley Calvert will gun it up the right hand side. That's 
well played there by Kurt Reynolds, standing his man up there very neatly. Reynolds plays it around the boards where he's finds support from Kieras. Kieras plays it out easily and finds Wiggins. Wiggins got the whole ice to skate into, but the vice will take a chance to change up. Draw to it. Wiggins gets inside his man. Oh, oh. big one bad on the rebound. Cron took it in. Wiggins right comes nice on. on. Good for Red Knight. Well, paradise for the Bison. I think it does. There's not much of a protest in the, base, uh, the Bracknell Beast players, though, so must be a goal. Well, Wig Wam Bam makes the Bison go mad by the look of things, as it looks like the Bison have scored their big goal. With still discussions going on down there. Love to have the microphone over there. The goal judges like certainly came off. Rene Ross is now going to skate across. And he hasn't washed no, it out. No, he hasn't given the goal. No goal. Big one, bam, doesn't make the ball. And you wasted over. that line. I've wasted that line. Anyway, who cares? 14 and 41 to go here in the third. Bison still 4-1 up, despite what was nearly a goal for the team. Hey, why don't we put this one in the back of the net now, boys? Actually, have a go. I personally thought it was a bit contentious, that one. Uh, I thought... I, well, I think I agree with this decision. Yeah, it was one of those ones, it was... I think it was sort of just expected to be, I think the Bison helped himself by celebrating the goal, really. Moria wins the draw and is able to work it ooh, back, kind of, to Lauko. Lauko plays on the short pass to Oakford. Good interchange between the two of them there. Nicky Watt deciding it might be goon time and goes in for Lauko on a big check. Bison top in the room. Oh, that's going. Oh, that's a goal for the basics, the Bison, Toby Redmond. Almost seems slightly embarrassed to celebrate that one. He took a horrible deflection. Uh, off the ice, it took a nasty bounce. Poor Marashi, his teammates are straight around him, controlling him. Because you have to feel sorry for him. He's had an absolute blinder tonight with the beast. And then a goal like that flips over his shoulder. Oh, I feel sorry for the guy, but the scoreboard says it all. 14 and 29 to go in the third. Tony Redmond gets another goal for the season as it bounced over Marashi's shoulder to make it 5 1 to the Bison. Yeah, I can't wonder how on earth that went. Tony Redmond is through. through. So I was looking at it. Yeah, it's just threw the puck on that. Um, for some reason, it just... What the, what, what, what the hell did it hit, though? Because it just needed to take a bizarre bounce off the ice. And Marashi was expected to a different place. It just went right off. Oh, uh, extraordinary goal. I feel very sorry for him, because he's had an absolute yeah. run. Again, Redmond tries it again for that bottle of healing. Not too far away. Hey, who says you can't teach old dogs new tricks? He's going to get a break, though. You've got to be careful, because they're going to cut it for themselves. Well worked out. Shot the pitch disappears over. Sesky finishes his check on Redmond. Redmond then goes in on the play. He finds Greg Randall. And Lauko's going to have to do the work, but Randall comes away with it, tries to find Sesky in front. Instead, Sesky gets inside. There's a shot from Moore, deflected wide by uh, Annette as it comes back out. And the Bison maybe going to get a chance to break as it goes up the near side here. Nicky Watt tries to clear it back into the zone, eventually does, and Redmond has to regroup with Oakford around the back there. Poor Adam Marashi. Oh. Genuinely feel sorry for him. Great play there, though, by Sean Thompson. Don't give anything away on that. Lauko lays it off to Thompson. Thompson going to take it in towards the net point, tries to find the box in the box. He isn't able to bury it. Works it back to Kieran, who just rotates it around and finds Chin. Chin takes it into the zone. Work round. Sammy Zajac with the shot. Oh, rebound coming off for Ashley, high and wide. Luckily, the Bison able to keep hold of that one as it comes back out to Sajak from Thompson. Sajak dumps it in again, going for the tip. Two Bison guys just gunning in there. Kira strikes it. Nice little tip there by Lauko, forcing the save from Rashi at the near end. Shows his confidence is back up. And they go for the big cross middle ice pass where it finds Calvert. Calvert will try to take it in. Well stood up there by Sammy Zajak. Big game from him tonight. He's impressed me as it works back around. And the Bison are going to get put pressure on in deep. Randall gives up on the puck and goes to Bronyman. Bronyman is able to keep it alive, but in the pass does it fine. Miles then tries to hope it on to Calvert. He's really gunning, he's trying to get inside Kiras. Kiras holds him off in a bit of a strength battle. Kiras then throws him into the board. That's good play there by Mindy Kiras on the D. Bronyman's now going to get a chance to skate through. He lays it off to Thompson. Bison, if you want this, you got it. Bronyman in front, Bronyman back and not far away at all there. Just past the post. Thompson collects and goes into a board battle once again. Thompson comes away with it behind the net. Finds the man in front, shot, good save by Marashi again. Bison continue to rotate, there's Kurt Reynolds, Kurt Reynolds makes point. Rashi with the save, rebound comes out in front, good control there. And the beast just sneak out the zone where Reynolds will have to collect at the back door. Yeah, that's the point out, I think, really got to say, the Thompson, Chin, Bronneman lines really had a good game today, and uh, it's unfortunate Bronneman there couldn't get a goal, because he's, he's had a really good game tonight.
Hey, I think they all have this Bison team tonight. They've all looked very strong, very much up for this, which you would hope. Wiggins now going on the charge. Tom Long finishes his tip on Calabes. Calabes not at all happy with that one. Long then goes back in again, but the Bees are able to actually come out for this time. Greg Martin, he's had a good game tonight, I feel. Tries to take it in the zone, and uh, Chris Wiggins going to get called for high sticking, probably. Oh, no, he's going to go for hooking. So, Chris Wiggins comes over and joins us. Give Greg Martin his credit. I think he's played well tonight. Actually, Albert's also played well for the beach tonight, but I don't think he can look past one man in his beach lineup and man of the match. Yeah, exactly. And he's, he's kind of got for him, you got to hope that that, that Tony Remigo hasn't like messed with his head. That doesn't look like it has. He's still been making some key saves since, but you do have to feel sorry for him. He's, he's been hung out to dry time and time again. He must have faced what at least 50 shots in this game, and now he's he kept the hell of a lot. It's been a great, great performance from him. Well, power play for the Brackle Bees. Then they're going to try and get another bit of goal and try and make this a little bit interesting. Bees work it round. This is smart play. They're giving credit. Nicky Watt plays it back to Dumas. Dumas tries to go back across to Greg Randall, but fans on it. But luckily keeps it alive. Nicky Watt still got it. Pinch and Seski in at the net. Back round to Dumas. Dumas got it on the point. No, he works it. Greg Randall's shot disappears past the post. Maybe a rebound off the back of the net. Bison actually able to clear, and Lauko could put the pressure on in deep here with one minute and 30 to go on the Bees power play. Good play there by Marashi. Just kept it alive just enough, but Lauko putting the pressure on. But the Bees. Have it the other side, can't get round an experienced head like Dumas like that. Here go the bees out on the fly then, and who else is going to take it forward but Pinch. Pinch dumps it in, nice cross eyes pass, finds Seski neatly. Seski plays it back and finds Dumas once, sorry, more, more with the shot, trying to find the tip in front, but Nicky Watt didn't seem too interested. Bison may go long here, Lauko tries to get on that one, not far away, Marashi keeps it alive. Plays it around for Moore, Moore works it across. Bison needs part in and finds Seski. Seski held up by his man though, works it back to Randall. Randall's shot. Looked like Nicky Watt was trying to get a tip on that one, but just didn't. It. He goes back into the pinch behind the net. He's put in half by Redman. 45 seconds. Shot in front, broken up neatly. Comes back out to the point though. Shane Moore will once again work it around. Finds Greg Randall. Greg Randall finds Seski. Seski in the danger zone. Oh, that wasn't far away. Whistles past the post. But Moore collects it just in the zone again. Plays it round the back door to find pinch. 30 seconds on the beast power play. Back inside, trying to find the man back door. Fights the defence strong in front. Comes back out to Shane Moore once again. Moore plays it round. Finds pinch. Been good play here. Pitch finds the man back door. Nicky Watt should have buried that one, but did it. Broken up. Seski not happy with his teammate. This, uh, Andy Hemmings going to gun it forward here for the Bison. Hemmings got support from Thompson, works it back. Hemmings and Thompson, great interchange there. Back to Hemmings. Shoot, good save by Marashi. Double save by Marashi. Or a shot past the post there as the uh, Bison penalty call comes to an end. Calvert going to find a man coming at him out the box. Uh, and all we can do is just dump it in where Oakwood chases it. Nine minutes 37 to go here in the first. Played around to Kiras. Kiras works it in just about to Thompson. Thompson plays it off the board. Maybe a chance for Wiggins. He's got Bronham in his support, but Wiggins going to go in himself. Rashi stands up strong once again, and Wiggins takes control of it on the far side. Wiggins dumps it in and around. Finds Sean Thompson. Thompson works it in and finds Wiggins back door. This rotation just goes around the side. Wiggins keeping that puck alive. And it's going to be a penalty call against Wiggins now. Well, he's had two minutes rest, Wiggy. Have another two, son. He can't believe he's been called for this. It's going to be roughing. Have to make considering some of the things that have gone on this game. It's a bit of a light call. Yeah, that's what we seem to get in, the, uh, in this league. It's consistent, and <laughs> it's consistently inconsistent calls we've had in these games. I was just saying, um, it's the thing we've seen in this league this season is the official seats have been consistently inconsistent with what they've been calling and haven't been calling. But just go, moving away from that, as we've been talking a lot about Adam Marashin's game, but we've got to give credit to Tom Annette, so he hasn't had a great deal of things to do, but he's made some big saves when he's been called upon. It must be difficult for a goalie who's only faced not that many shots in the game. Bice to clear out the zone, and maybe Lauko's going to get a chance to chase down Marashin. Marashin goes in behind his net, but Lauko's coming out of his speed. Nearly gets to it, but luckily the Bees are able to come away with this one. Uh, that was nearly danger play for Lauko there. Kira steps in very nicely on Shane Moore, and Lauko steps in on Moore. And this is good play in the neutral zone, but the Bees are still going to be able to come away with it. Pinch tries to work it across and finds Seski. Both men go to the net. Seski dumps it across. A lot of open ice out there. Shane Moore steps into the play. But he's broken up by Kiris, but he's still able to find it around the pinch. Look for Randall to sneak in. Randall sneaks in, but he's broken up. And now the Bison are going to get a chance to break, maybe. 
Steve Moria will take this one forward. It's got Lanco in support. Moria with the shot, not too far away. Good save there by Marashi off the pad. Come off the deflected board. Kurt Reynolds, good strong play on the D there. Moria dumps it in and the Vice will take a chance to change here with one minute and eight to go on the B's power play. Has it been a good night for them on the power play? One goal that came pretty much with a second to go. You can watch it out. Also conceding a short-handed goal there. Back into Randall. Randall plays it off and finds Carl Graham. Carl Graham skates into the zone, but a poor pass. And if they find this right, Hemmings is all to himself. Reynolds is put under pressure high. Reynolds forced to wrap it around the board. Might just escape the zone and does as uh, Carl Graham fans of that. But yeah, Hemmings all of a sudden had a lot of open ice. If the pass was found, Hemmings was through. 40 seconds to go on the power play for the Bees now. As it's taken forward by Carl Graham. Carl Graham jumps it into the zone. Straight away under pressure, and the Bison are able to turn it over once again. Work wide, but it will find Jamie Lyons. Jamie Lyons now going to get a chance to escape. One on one. Man hops off the bench. Jamie Lyons slap shot broken up very neatly. Now the B's got a chance here. If they can find the open ice pass, they do. Seski's going to take it in. Tries to find support from Pinch. Top short tops and decides to go through Seski to get the best way there. Seski ain't happy with that again. Bison able to clear it down the ice. Ten seconds to go on the on the penalty kill, and the B's going to have to take it in behind their own net now. And they work it wide, and Randall's not going to want to stay there for long with the man coming out the box. Chin flicks it back in and finds Randall. Bison penalty over. Seven minutes and eight to go here as they work it in. Dumas can't get anything on it. Nicky Chin dumps it down the ice. And maybe Sean Thompson's going to get a chance to open the skates up here. Thompson, good play there. Swivels the body and oh, nearly came away with that in the board battle, but just doesn't. So it continues on round the side. Calvert plays it round where he finds Brunneman under two. Bam, pressure, but still plays off. Where's the spare man for the Bison? Sajak just had to keep that one alive. Dumps it into the zone. Oli Bronyman seems to be hooked up in another guy's skate there. Six minutes and 42 to go here in the third period. Bees go for the big long cross ice pass, doesn't find anyone. And it's going to be a nice and cool on the play. Good penalty, they did the bell pass in the credits tonight. They have conceded a lot more penalties than we used to see, so I do. But every one of them, they killed apart from that one with one second of that team. Yeah, exactly, and uh, they've really come up big tonight, especially with that five-on-three they had earlier in this period, and uh, that could have been a key momentum swing in, in the Brackenby's favour if they got a goal there, but they've uh, defended well, and the result of that is shown on the scoreboard. Put into the price of putting the pressure on high despite losing the draw and maybe going to come away with it in the board battle, which Mori does. Mori, Mori keeps it in there, just about, well played. Rotating it around and it comes back out to Kiris on the point. He plays it smartly inside. There's a shot. Marashi comes up once again with the same. Well played out of Marashi. Oh, you've got to feel sorry for him. I mean, it's very difficult not to talk about that goal. Because maybe at 4 1, the B's having these power play opportunities. Nick a goal. It's a two goal game. But then, luck. Luck. That's the thing. No, I was just going to say, I agree with that. Which is They've had some chances in this period, especially I think two of them have fallen to Nicky Watt and he's failed to convert both of them. But they were two big chances and they really had an impact on the uh, final result of this game. Greg, Morton dumps it, Greg Martin dumps it forward, but it... Uh, How did that not hit anything? Well, that's an impressive <laughs> sign he's done there. Bison maybe going to get a chance to skate forward now. Moria going to... Well, Moria seems to uh, have just taken his edge off the game a little bit. He knows it's pretty much dead, so he's saving himself a little big game tomorrow night in Manchester. Greg Martin will chase it forward now. Sammy Zajac puts him in on the board very nicely. Good play there, just don't wreck that shirt. Bison work it round the far side now, and uh, they're under pressure. Maybe a turnover's going to come. Nicky Watt straight away put into the board by Moria, but the B's going to work this one round in their favour. Maybe not. It comes back out. Ashley Jones on the ice for the B's. Haven't seen much of him tonight. They've pretty much, I don't think we've seen anything. Oh, he's been out there a couple of times. Has he? Oh, yeah. good. I'm, I'm watching this game intently. Yeah. <laughs> no change in the How did you get the playoffs? <laughs> Oh, cheers for letting the big secret out to everybody. Do, uh, no one knew at home that uh, I'll, I'll do the admissions now. The EPL playoff finals, uh, the semi finals, and the final are being commentated by me and Steve Clark of Power Play magazine. You're an idiot. Well, hopefully, no one. Well, I, I don't say hopefully, no one will buy this DVD. It'll be a big seller. But yes, just to let you know, the, the voice of the commentary playoffs will be me. Uh, I do apologise. Bison regroup in their own zone now, they're going to try and work it out as Oakford plays it across and finds support from Redmond. Redmond going to go into the neutral zone and dumps it in nicely and uh, Adam Arash going to be forced to cover up there, control the rebound very nicely. That could have come out, five minutes and ten to go here in the third. Well done for letting the secret out. Not trust if they had told you who EastEnders killer was, you would have gone out <laughs> and blurted it to everyone there. Who did you reckon it was? I don't watch EastEnders. Oh, good Lord. Did you watch EastEnders last night? Stacey was the killer. I have money on Ian Beale, personally. 
Bison win the draw, comes back out to Mindy Kieras. Kieras with a slap shot. Oh, and Rene Ross decides it's penalty time. Seski not a happy man. It looks like Seski's going to be the man to go to the bin as well. As the linesman just ushers him away very neatly. Seski takes a sit down. So, Bison going to get a power play to end off the third period here. He wants to go to the final five minutes. I'm sure they'd love it to be 6 1 and send a bit of a statement out to the league. Yeah, I think they, the Bison should feel that the amount of shots they've had warrants some more goals this game. <laughs> and I think it'd be good for them just to get another putt pass from Rashi because he's been like a. A brick wall with maybe a few holes in. A bit harsh on Marashi. Saying he's a brick wall with holes in it. Yeah, with a few holes in. <laughs> hey, I tell you what, he's, wash he's been hung out more to dry than my mother's washing is today. Yeah. Poor bloke, I feel very sorry. It must be, it must be difficult for an netminder to go out there and find yourself in this situation. Yeah. Where well, you've got no D in front of you and you're having to stand on your head week in, week out. He must be loving it because he's getting all these shots. I mean, you look at their actual save percentage, it's not bad as it comes back out to Reynolds on the point. Reynolds works here, big slap shot from Kiris Marashi, stands strong again. It's not bad, yeah, averages. 87.7, it's probably gone up a few, few numbers tonight with the massive saves he's made. Tom Long works into the zone where he's got a man all over him like a rash, and there's a big trip. Rene Ross doesn't call it, Chris Wiggins. Uh, just managing to play on with that one, actually. Interesting line for the year, uh, and a uh, big check comes in after the play from Tom Long there. Uh, no, sorry, Nicky Chin, do apologise. So an interesting power play line. Jamie Lyon, Chris Wiggins, Nicky Chin getting a chance to show what they can do. It gives it, it gives Mo the opportunity to do this sort of thing. Bison regroup then, and they're going to go forward as Tom Long plays it in and finds Jamie Lyon. Jamie Lyon trying to work it around. Jamie Lyon plays it back out to Kiris. Kiris into... Uh, Line, line back out to Kiris, neatly rotated around. Kiris plays it into line once again. Line with the shot, Marashi stands tall, stands strong, covers up the puck. One minute and five to go on the Bison power play. Camera on you. <laughs> We've lost the cameraman, Reggie's done a runner. He had the hand off. Imagine he's gone downstairs ready for the. Uh, Bison win the draw, comes back out to the point where Redmond's going to collect it. Redmond plays it in and he gets it back and he takes a shot, but that's not going to trouble anybody but the uh, men in the corner. Sam Oakford plays it around, finds support through Andy Hemmings. Hemmings works it back to Tony Redmond on the point. Tony Redmond maybe too far in to shoot for him there, he can't find that bubble from there. Bison play it around neatly as Lauco plays it off Moria, now it finds Hemmings. Hemmings going to get a turn and go at the net. Poor D there by the bees, just took their eyes off where Hemmings was. Hemmings able to rotate, maybe going to let fly it. Good save by Marashi, sticking out of the pad at the near post. The bees take control, go long, and that's broken up very well by Oakford because Terry Miles was gunning it in. Here they go again, Lauko going to try and get round his man. Lauko got support coming now, comes from Tony Redmond on the point, back into Lauko on the far side. Lauko trying to just work it in, finds Redmond. Redmond, his labels getting the shot, so instead goes to Oakford. Oakford back to Redmond, 10 seconds to go, trying to find Lauko at the back door, the Bees are maybe going to get a chance to break. They play the Sensory, which they don't. Seski would have been coming out of the puck, the box, and they could have just taken a little bit of control and then found Seski on the spare side. Seski now jumps out, three minutes and three to go. As the Bison, that's nice play there by Moria, finds Chinu, let's fly. Marashi comes up strong once again. Greg Martin now going to rotate this one out for the Bees, they go across ice. But Martin actually able to take control of that's a very neat pass inside. He finds his man nicely, who tries to get the shot off. He's taken out of the play by his D-man. And it's just going to be a hooking call there, but it's a penalty you're quite happy to give away there. I almost wonder if uh, Rene Ross could have given a penalty shot there, because it was in the motion of shooting. Motion of shooting? Yes. Mm. You've read a stat book, haven't you? I would have found that in a stat book. Well, two minutes and 44 to go in the game. The Bees are going to get a power play opportunity and uh, who knows what could happen here. One goal could just lift aside. It did to them earlier in the season when they came, brought it back to, uh, I think it was about 6-5, wasn't it, at one point, or 7-5 or something, when the Bees really came back strongly into it. You need to win your face off towards. That one comes out the zone. And instead, the Bees are going to try and regroup it. Greg Martin. Look, I'm only going to give my man of the match to one man, but Adam, Sean Thompson going to take it forward now. And Callum Best collects so This is another strange power play line going on here. Pretty much a third line for the... Uh, Danny House is out there as well, and Danny House isn't exactly a scorer. 
Callum Best plays that well through the zone, give him credit. Tries to work it back to Martin, but no one there. Sean Thompson takes control of it. He's got support from Chin. Chin now. Oh, Danny has with the interception. Put that on the statue fans. Yeah, that will buy that as a collector's edition of this DVD. One minute and 20 to go then. Danny House will now try and take it forward for the Bees. A smart play, but he's going to be held up very neatly by the D. Less than two minutes to go. Reynolds plays out, maybe a chance for Lauco to skate on. Lauco plays it off to Moria. Bees men coming out of the box. Mori knew he had to cut back inside but couldn't. And now he's going to be a chance for Dumas to take forward. Dumas trying to find a bit of support out there. It finally comes, but he only finds Mori who clears out of the zone. And Lauco, B's not really interested. Lauco is going to skate round his man. Gets the shot off. Good save by Marashi. Good rebound control, even got the puck out quickly. Give him full credit, but the whistle had already gone by then. One minute, 38 to go, they had 55 seconds on the power play. It's 5-1 to the bottom. Uh, I will say, that's off course. That's the second time that's happened now. Rashi gets wah! the puck, that's all gets I'm the puck. At the moment. And, uh, wah! 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 Up. He just gets the part, he's got it under control, just throws it out to carry on and keep the puck, but no, the ref blows the whistle when he doesn't need to. We've seen that a few occasions this season when they don't blow at the right time, and situations like that one, he should just let the play carry on. Let me decipher that at home once, shall I, fans? That was just wow, wow, wow. B's coming out the other way now, trying to find Terry Miles. Terry Miles lays it off nicely. Calvert trying to get the shot in right. One minute and 25 to go here. B's going to try and rotate around, but it's broken up by Sammy Zajac, who's had a good game tonight. Randall isn't even escaped in the zone. Now Lauko's going to get a chance to break. Lauko got Mori in support. Mori in. Lauko. Lauko plays nicely. Moves it around the box in the box. Buries it with the backhand. Paradise by the red light for the Bison. One minute and 30 to go in the game. The second short-handed attempt of the night. Andre Lauko with it. The Bison are 6-1 in front. Yeah, once again, Paul oh, Alan Marashi there was, just, uh, was taken right out of the play there by the skills of uh, Lauko and Moria. He had no chance for that. And another, another, another peach from the Bison. A peach, a peach is the word to describe that. God, Sammy, get a goal with that shirt, Sam. Man of the matches for you tonight, uh, Brad Robbins. Uh, that's, that's, yeah, I think it's a unanimous decision on uh, who we're going to give it to. It's got to be Adam Marashi. It's the reason why it's only 6-1. Calvert now going to go into the zone and try and break something. Calvert would be my second man of the match. My third man of the match would be Greg Martin. They play quite well, but you can only give it to one man. It's got to be Adam Marashi. As the bees try and break something, but it's broken up once again. Who are you giving it to for the boys? Well, it's been a number of performances that uh, stood out today. I think there's like players that Lauko's obviously had a good game. Shin certainly had a good one. But I'm going to give it to, uh, have to give it to Chris Wiggins today. So that you can see the... Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Please rotate around. It should oh, have been buried save. at the back door there. Good save by our next 28 seconds. You're yeah. going for Chris Wiggins. Yeah, about to, just going to say, yeah, he's, he's uh, the great game. He's, the the Bracknell Beast has no idea what to do with them. And you can see they've been worried about what to do because they've been just look at him and they've been trying to take him out of the play. Uh, I'm well, Wiggy's up there for me. I mean, there's a lot of players to give to. Lauko, Moria, Tom Long to finish his checks. That's nice play. Tom Long next by. And Marashi comes up with the save there. Tom Long's had another impressive game. I tell you what, that's my tip for February's player at the month at the moment, is Tom Long. He really has been stunning. So there's only one man I'm giving it to tonight. Sammy Sajak. And an absolute grinder tonight, I feel. And he's wearing a great shirt with a great set of names on the oh, back of it. Oh, biased decision. He's not biased. He's had a great day. Give him credit. I mean, he's got some critics now. Uh, some who are very quiet in the fact they're critics of him. But he's had a big game tonight. I've really been impressed by him once again. Bison win the draw. Kira's going to get a shot off. Go for the tip. Rebound in front. Time running down. All that matters, though. The Bison make it 3-0 at home against the Brackle Bees. It's the M3 derby, but it's 3-0. 6-1. Good result. Good result. For the yeah, it's a great result for the Bees. Uh, well, the Bison, sorry. Not a great result for the Bees. Yeah, they'll be, they'll be a little disappointed perhaps not to score more goals, but at the end of the day, that doesn't really matter because it's another good result. And then, yeah, again, continues this uh, winning run at home. Well, we'll be back with all the post match reaction from players and us too. You get us on screen again, you're going to love it. Post match presentation.
Another great victory for the Bison in the M3 derbies against the Bracknell East, coming out 6-1 victory in that one, and 6-1 uh, doesn't really tell the story of the game. I mean, the Bees were overrun, but the Bison at times didn't perform to their best of levels. Oh, yeah, the Bison seemed to dominate the game, so to speak. They got 58 shots on Adam Rashi's goal, but Adam Rashi, he's the key uh, name into why this game only finished 6-1, because it could have been a hell of a lot more. And you feel sorry for him, considering one of those goals was an absolute shot from the middle of nowhere that just bobbled over his shoulder, and apart from that, he had a strong game. Tom Annette's had a strong game as well. It's one of those games where, as a netminder, you've uh, got to keep a little bit of wake up there because you could doze off bang. And especially with guys like Seski and Pinch and, dare I say it, Nicky Watt and Randall shot from the point, there is the chance for them to score goals. Well, exactly, yeah. They've got a great offensive threat on that top line then. I mean, it's got to be difficult for us. It gets a tail of two goalies, really. We've actually faced loads of shots tonight. Tom Annette's only, thinks, I think, 17 or something in this game. So you've got to keep your concentration up. And he did well when he was called upon. Anyway, let's get over to the uh, end of match interviews that we do, obviously with the players. Dan always does them when he's here. So first of all, we course up with player coach Steve Morrie for his reaction to the victory. Hi, Steve. It's a good result tonight. Excellent result. It's a, it's a game uh, we don't know what to expect from. We know Bracknell are going to come hard. They're you know they're a team that's in a in a huge battle for the eighth and final uh, playoff spot. So you know those teams are dangerous and they're going to come out uh, every night and, and and go for the win. So I think. I think from my point of view, uh, from a coaching point of view, I think we wanted to make sure that we established ourselves in the first period, which was crucial, and, and we did that. I thought we played very well, um, getting a three-goal lead. Unfortunately, they, they got one back there near, near the end of the period. It seemed like you, uh, the, tonight's time, you seemed to jiggle the lines about a bit. Was that a calculated decision to try and neutralize the threat of uh, Seski and Pinch? No, oh, I mean, uh, like, I think that in terms of lines throughout the whole year, I'm, uh, you know, I'm willing to change those up, you know, whenever. And I think it's happened a lot where, you know, we, uh, you know, Cheney's playing with me, me and Andre. Um, last weekend, both games, I, I, I changed, uh, I changed them up, and immediately we got results. So, um, you know, I thought we'd go with, uh, you know, with Hammer, with me and Andre, and, and Cheney to play with uh, Ollie and Tomer. And I thought all three lines did a good job tonight. I was going to say, uncharacteristic display by the team. You gave up 18 minutes of, in penalties and uh, quite a few power plays in there, but. You only conceded one goal. Are you pleased with the effort on the penalty kill tonight, especially on that five on three? Yeah, the the PK was uh, was excellent. I thought you know they got a goal, they got a goal uh, from 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 a rush actually. Uh, you know on their power play with one or two seconds to go. Um, but overall, I thought we, we did an excellent job of uh, of penalty killing. And we we kept all the shots uh, from the points you know, from the outside, and, and we cleared the front of the net. And we never really gave them um, good scoring opportunities. And uh, once again, it's Bratton. We seem to put up a lot of shots. I think it's something around the 60 mark again tonight. But Adam Arashi came up big for the team and deservedly won the man of the match for them. Are you slightly disappointed to not have got a few more goals on the scoreboard? Um, no, not really. I don't think so. Uh, yeah, like you said, Marashi, he played very, very well. And it's funny because a lot of times when the backup, uh, when the backup plays, you know, that team, you know, thinks, OK, we're going we're gonna to get goals tonight. But, you know, marashi has been capable. He's, uh, you know, he did well, I think, uh, against Guilford there. And he's done well tonight and, you know, 58, 60 shots is a lot of shots. And, um, yeah, I mean, six goals is fine. As long as you win, that's all that matters to me. Once again, it's yet another win at home. That's now nine in a row in the league here. And that stretches back to November. Yeah, I didn't really know when exactly it uh, stretched back to, but uh, we love to play here. The guys love to play in, in front of our fans. And uh, it's important, I think, that, uh, you know, we've got that. We've got that home ice sort of advantage. And uh, I, I know the fans are, are a big, big bonus um, you know, for us as players on the ice, and um, hopefully we can keep it going. 
It's obviously another win at home tonight, but you've got to go on the road tomorrow to Manchester. That's, that's a big game. It's a big game. We haven't won in Manchester. I think the last time we picked up a point in overtime. Um, we're going to go We're going to go to win, that's for sure. Um, we've still got the chance to move up the table. If we lose tomorrow night, uh, that's probably it. It's probably going to be finished. But if we can beat Manchester, I think we had a good shot of, uh, you know, of getting into fourth, and then we'll see what happens you know, in a few weeks' time. Well, uh, a victory for the Bison there, and as Steve Morris says, it's just a win. It may not have been the prettiest performance, but it's another W on the board. Well, exactly, so a win's a win, and as he says, this win gives him more of a chance to get on the board higher up the league. He says it's still realistic, and but tomorrow night's is the key into where they progress in this league this season. Should be a really interesting game tomorrow night in Manchester. Obviously, by the time you watch this DVD, you'll know the results, so uh, either put a big smiley face on me or a sad frown. Choose your picks, depending on what the game happens. Anyway, also Dan calls up with Chris Wiggins after the match, and here's his interview. Right, well, Chris, it's a good result tonight. Uh, definitely, I mean, it's always, a, it's always a good game when the Bees come into town, a bit of local rivalry, but, you know, uh, so far this season we seem to have their number, so can't really ask for more than that. Uh, good performance from yourself tonight. Uh, we capped it off with a, a superb individual goal. Uh, it wasn't all myself. It was a fantastic little play from Longo. Pulled a pick off nicely, so a little drop pass in the corner. Just gave me loads of space, really. Um, J-Mo tying up in front of the net. You know, guys doing their job and things happen. And you could have had another one that was uh, chalked off. Was it a goal? Uh, it crossed the line. I know that much. Uh, I didn't catch why it was uh, waved off. I presume man in the crease, uh, J-Mo driving to the net, but who knows. <laughs> and tonight, you see... Your performance seems to rattle the Bracknell Beast players tonight. They seem to uh, struggle to keep up with you at times and seem to just try and check you. And then, obviously, you had that slash with uh, Greg Randall slashed you early in that second period. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's just one of those things, really. It's a physical game. I think for that slash uh, from Greg Randall, uh, he may have, I may have given him a little jab beforehand, so to be expected. But, you know, luckily we've got uh, a power play out of it, so no complaints there. <laughs> And, uh, of course, it keeps the winning run now. I think it's nine in a row at home in the league, and that run stretches back to November. Don't jinx it. <laughs> All right, and uh, and uh, so it's got some momentum going into tomorrow night's fixture against Manchester. Uh, definitely, definitely. I mean, Manchester haven't had the best running results of late, so uh, our team seems to be playing well. Uh, our lines are definitely getting settled at the moment, so everyone seems to be performing. So, yeah, hopefully we'll uh, get a good result up in Manchester. Well, Wiggy's always an interesting man to talk to at the end of the game, and don't mention the streak, remember, don't... What streak? Make, what streak, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's all a bit of make-believe, but the thing about Wiggy tonight was he once again showed his quality, and that goal and that finish, I mean, winning a battle on the boards, turning it in and firing a puck home, shows just what a talent he is. Yeah, we, we piped him up in today's game. I gave him man of the match, but once again, it's another fine performance from him. Capped off with a superb goal. I said solo effort. He was a little, perhaps a little too modest in the interview and said it's more of a team goal. But yeah, another great shot. And of course, he could have had another one, which he doesn't know why it was ruled out. Well, I, I'm speaking with people at the end of the game. They seem to suggest it's because the net came off its moorings before the puck went in, which I think is probably fair enough. You know, look back on the replays at home and you'll see it probably is a sort of fair enough comment. Anyway, this bit of Bolt Action Media Production for the Basing Stoke Bison in association with Ice Media Production and our sponsors, the Wolfies Restaurant, finally coming to the Basic Stoke Arena on Friday the 5th of March. We cannot wait to see you all there for opening night. Daniel Murphy, you'll be there for Wolfies because you love food. <laughs> Not as much as you do, big boy. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, big boy, is that a new nickname, is it now? Yeah, is sure. it past Watershed? Can we get away with that one, do you think? Yeah. Yeah, all right, OK. Anyway, on behalf of Daniel Murphy and myself, Graham Bell, thank you very much for tuning in, and until next time, good night.